there, John here at MicroAces. Welcome to the video assembly guide for the Newport 17 124th scale aircraft um, of the Air MicroAces Aero series um, for radio control. Let's get down onto the billboard and have a look at the kit. This is what you should get in your standard Newport kit. Um, we've got the uh, the parts sheets here. So obviously that's the fuselage. Um, you can see it's in the uh, the olive drab of the um, uh, Royal Flying Corps, and we've got. The plastic parts, um, which have got um, the undercarriage, struts, uh, other bits and pieces, stuff to make up the um, uh, the uh, rotating uh, rotary engine as well. Uh, we've got our two mil foam parts as well, which mainly go towards making up the uh, the, the internals of the fuselage. Uh, we've got our little um, sticker pack. Um, these are all uh, profile cut so that uh, they should uh, peel off and uh, when you stick them on where instructed. And we've got here our, um, our wings, uh, double side print, and uh, so that we just need to, uh, to cut those out. Then we've got our bag of bits. Um, this should have your vac formed cowl which we'll be uh, cutting out and printing later um, you've got your uh, control rods these will obviously be cut down they're uh, far too long at the moment but you've got these um, shaped ends uh, here um, that uh, uh, sit at the tail feathers um, so there are those two uh, you should have a full 500 mil strip of uh, carbon fiber. There we go. And let's put that to one side. You should also have a, a black tube. It's a straw essentially, and that's for making up the cylinders of your um, rotary engine. You should have a nice bit of uh, laser cut plywood there. You've got a, a little um, wage slip back. I used to remember having my, <laughs> my wages uh, put in that when I used to work for, uh, um, for a, few, a few quid um just doing some uh, cleaning jobs and uh, that sort of thing in here we have our rigging wire and actually this is now on a, a little um, spooler and within that spooler there you have a rigging tool too so um, i don't actually need that uh, rigging tool just there I've, I've already got one in the pack which is great but always useful having a spare should one break which they have been known to do. Um, you've got a, a shorter piece of the same material um, that's been supplied in the 500 mil. That's for the uh, leading edge of the elevator. You've got a couple of tires there. You've got the axle, which is another piece of carbon fiber, um, but that's actually got a, a round profile. There you go. Uh, you should have a couple of um, four millimeter magnets just there. They'll obviously be stuck together. And you've also got a little brass tube here, which forms the uh, the central part of your um, dummy uh, rotary engine. So just pop that there and then we did have another box here there we go and in this box if you've got the standard kit rather than the airframe only um, in here you should have your 
motor with long prop shaft and your prop with the uh, prop adapter probably already pushed through there we go and that should be a gws uh, 4530 so uh, there we go um, if you've also got the receiver we normally put the receiver into the box there unless you've got a stabilization um, receiver in which case it's usually supplied separately so we'll just pop that to one side get the decks cleared and we can uh, uh, we can start going through the tools that we need for the job i forgot to mention the assembly guide and uh, this obviously comes within the uh, the kit itself uh, we've actually reduced the size we used to do it as a sort of an a4 size but we've reduced it reduced the amount of paper that we're using um, and also uh, reduced the weight of the uh, of the kit as well for uh, for postage purposes um, the obviously the issue with uh, reducing the size is um, that um, that the beveling guide is half the size it needs to be so included in here uh, in the central pages is a pullout um, which has the full sized uh, beveling guide scoring guide for all of the parts within the kit um, so that should uh, that should be included too so uh, we'll just pop that to one side for now we'll be using that and we'll just go through the tools that we need for the job well firstly obviously we've got our uh, our phone to foam on here we've also got a, uh, a super nose which is our little nozzle that actually increases the accuracy of uh, the gluing it just brings down the um, uh, the size of output of the uh, of the glue so we can control it more um, I've also started using this um, uh, the CA glue um, it's a, um, a foam safe glue I don't use it uh, too much um, uh, it's mostly the foam to foam that I use but this certainly for securing rigging that sort of thing I'm, um, I'm, I'm happy to use this or the um, aliphatic resin one or the other um, as I said before, um, we do need a uh, rigging tool, but there is one in the kit. Always handy to have a spare, though. Um, we've got our uh, sanding stick, which has got two different levels of grit on either side. Um, we've got a, a straight edge uh, that uh, will help us with our scoring and any cutting that we're going to do. And talking of cutting... Um, I've got my trusty scalpel with a fresh blade, hasn't been used yet in anger um, or, or any other. <laughs> we don't use blades in anger, of course we don't. And uh, and of course my, um, my trusty tweezers um, that are very useful for those smaller parts, applying stickers, etc. Um, I think that's pretty much... Um, the, the the standard stuff we'll need i might bring on other bits as well i've got my my new favorite tool which is uh, uh, predominantly used in sort of uh, clay uh, sculpting cake making that sort of thing um, but these two steel balls are very useful for uh, sort of squishing edges and uh, smoothing things out and also very good at removing um, some um, sort of smeared glue um, that you may have uh, bubbling around on surfaces so um, we'll, um, we'll I'll be using that and I'll show you how it's done um, but this I obtained in a, a, a just a normal hobby store we've got in the UK we've got a chain uh, of hobby um, craft stores called Hobbycraft um, and uh, that's where I got it but uh, yeah I mean any any decent and, and certainly online these uh, these sort of tools can be um, obtained. Um, this one is made by a company called Tonic Studios, um, which I would have thought would have made uh, um, liquid refreshments, but uh, but no, they make uh, these little things. So anyway, okay, well let's get started. <laughs> Yeah, 
first part I'm going to liberate uh, is the uh, little two mil foam part um, D1. So let's just I'll just show that to you there. Yeah. That is D1. And with my new blade, it should be pretty easy to. Um, slice through there we go just remove our round bit there and if I've got anything sticking up slightly proud where I've gone through the tag then I can just use use that knife to uh, to take that away or indeed you can use a sounding stick as well to tell you what to do so oh look i've been sanding stuff that's uh, not white so it's put a dirty mark on it but anyway that's all going to be covered up so uh so that's fine so and to this part i'm going to add two plastic pieces uh, to stiffen the whole thing up and that is my uh, P1 and P2. So that's, that's these parts just here. So there and there. Now, unusually, um, I don't think we do this on any of our other builds. We've actually, to this, we've integrated the, um, the tail skid. Um, on a lot of our other models, it is uh, done as a separate piece. But um, with this particular kit, uh, we, um, well, the thinking was um, to keep things pretty simple at the back, um, as lightweight as possible. So um, the more we can do to reduce the material, especially the more heavyweight material, it's all relative, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, if we can reduce that, then, uh, then all the better it means we have to put less ballast in the nose um, when we uh, when we come to uh, setting the aircraft up for flight. So to attach these two parts to uh, to our little central um, keel, as it were, um, the plastic should come right to the front of the part there that should provide you with the uh, best location uh, for all of the other bits um, lining up properly so what i'm going to do i'm just going to apply some glue down that path just a bead Go. And we can just pop our strip in place, get it all lined up so that it sits on the bottom of the keel. Like so it's sitting in the right places. We go and you'll notice that the plastic doesn't go all the way let's just move that slightly it doesn't go all the way to the back of the uh, the two mil keel it's got a sort of a gap of uh, around about what five mil or so just there and there's a reason for that that we'll go through very shortly but let's get the other of lamination onto our keel The lid on there for now. Right. So go. So what we're looking at here, obviously, is to 
get this um, apart, uh, our P1 and P2, whichever it is, it's, uh, this is P1 I'm putting on now. Getting it all lined up where it should be, but also obviously lining it up so that when we come to press the tail skid together, um, they, uh, the parts will sit happily um, either side of one another. So, like so. There we go. Now, the other thing that we need to do with um, this central keel is uh, we just need to shape it a little um, to make it easier for us uh, when we put the skin on. Um, firstly, we want to taper this back edge there, and that's why this the plastic only goes so far. Um, it leaves us with the ability to just uh, take off some material, so we taper the uh, the back edge a little, so that when the skin goes on, um, it can actually come together, um, rather than sitting two millimeters apart with uh, this sandwiched in the middle. So just very gently. Once again, you could do this with a uh, an aggressive sanding stick. Um, especially if you, your knife's not particularly sharp. But as I've got a fresh blade here, um, I can uh, use that to my advantage. Just slice off the necessary. There we go. Got a really nice taper on it now. You can see it's... It's almost pointed. The other thing I'm going to do, and actually this may be something I could have done before I put the um, uh, the, the plastic parts on, is that I'm also going to taper this little lump just here. Um, there is going to be a, um, a one millimeter um, sort of combing going over it, uh, coming to a point at the uh, the top there. So what I want to do is just want to take some of the material off um, here, so that as you can see, this this gets in the way a bit. But because it's nice and bendy, I can sort of bend these parts out of the way uh, to get where I want to go. So um, just going to pop one of those out of the way and then just gently shave some of the material off so that when we come to put the it sort of looks like a sort of um, almost like a a, um, a carved piece of wood that uh, that sits here as a sort of support for the for the tail skid so It doesn't need to be particularly elegant because, as I said, this is all going to be covered up. But if it allows the, um, the little structure to come together, pinch together um, at the uh, at the trailing edge, then that's exactly what we want. So there, that's good. I might just give that a quick finish. A bit of sanding. There we go. Let's just make sure my keel sits nice and flat and straight so that the plastics on either side will be really helping with that. Um, of course, you could let it set by putting something weighty on top just to make sure it is as, as flat as possible. Um, what I'm going to do now is just add a little bit of glue between the two parts of the tail skid and then I'm going to bring the skid together. In fact what I'm going to do is just add glue to, to one side and then bring them together so they touch 
glue transfers over and then I'm just going to let that fall apart the glue to dry and then we'll use its contact adhesive qualities um, to uh, to lock them together once uh, once it's dried okay so that's that part done now what we need is um, uh, D2 and D3 so that's D2 there so let's just release that from the clutches of the two mil foam sheet and D3 which is this square piece here Yep. So to these, before we install, let's just get rid of the, um, the parts that have been lasered and cut out. So yours may have already disappeared. But, um, we keep the laser as fine as possible so you don't get any burning on the back. Um, but sometimes you can get the uh, material holding on to some of the some of the cut parts. So to these we are going to add some stickers S1 and S2. So here's our sticker sheet. Uh, S1. This is rather dark cockpit area. So that's going to go on to our D2 part. So I'm going to use my tweezers just to make sure that goes into the right spot. Just there. Let's just try again. Yep. Fantastic. And then S2 comes D3. Just ease that off the sheet. Get it. Fantastic. Okay. So now we can install these onto the keel. Before we do, let's just bring the tail skid together. So that everything lines up. And then get as much of the tail skid together going down towards the keel as possible. Go. Right. So D2 installs right on the um, front edge of the keel, like so. And there's a slight angle on that as well, and we just want to make sure we conform to that. So let's just add our glue. Make sure that part stays where it should. Now that sticker you want facing backwards um, along the keel. Because that's going to be exposed by the um, by the cockpit, which is going to be around about here. And now we will pop D3 into the next slot available. Make sure there's a nice tight fit. Little 
go. Okay, well we're going to put the uh, next two bits of the airframe on, which are D4 and D5. And the uh, Newport rig does have a very quickly uh, tapering um, fuselage towards the uh, towards the tail. Let's just knock those parts out as well. Go. So D four. Just actually add the glue to the part itself rather than the. Heel. It doesn't really matter either way. Once again, decently tight fit. And on to the last D5. There we go. Obviously what we want is for the parts to be flush with the bottom of the keel there. That's where our, um, our fuselage skin is going to, uh, to sit. Go, and then what we need to do is flip this over and we're... That's not going to stay like that, is it? <laughs> But uh, flip it over, and we're going to add two parts to the uh, the forward part of the, or between the uh, the two formers at the front there. So that's uh, uh, two D sixes. There we go. So these should fit either way around so whatever whatever fits comfortably so you can see they fit there and like so we just need to pop some glue on the various surfaces just to make sure that uh, they stay where they're put relatively sparing there's lots of uh, lots of contact points for these parts so we don't need to put masses of glue on them set that aside to dry off whilst we crack on actually we won't set that aside to dry off we'll, we'll let it do its thing but while it is we're just going to add our hinge and um, a, um, a sticker as well um, for the rudder at the back which is essential we do it now because um, it, it's more difficult to do if uh, if we do it with the skin on so p4 is the uh, is the hinge part here on our plastic sheet let's just liberate that Uh, 
that uh, that's the piece there you can see b4 now that's got some scoring on it in the middle and what I suggest you do is just make sure that that scoring loosens up so we've got plenty of flexibility um, with the, the hinge itself and what we want to do when we place it there we want the hinge line um, to probably be about half a mil out from the back edge of our keel and uh, well that should run um, the entire depth of the uh, of the keel itself so it should be fairly um, obvious where the uh, where the part uh, where the part sits so we'll just apply a little bit of uh, glue onto the um, first part of the hinge just pop that in place like so that hinge around there we go. now before we put the sticker on I'm just going to let that um, set so that it doesn't move when we come to uh, come to uh, play around with the with the sticker so let's just pop that to one side and uh, the sticker pack we'll just leave there for now so we're going to let that uh, let that dry and then we'll come back and uh, move on to the next step of the uh, build which is on uh, page 11 of the uh, assembly guide so s3 is the sticker we need to pop over that and there's a little trick that i'm going to do well not, well not a trick it's a, just a, a sort of a recommendation um i'm going to just cut the uh the rudder out now i'm not going to attach it but um i'm just going to use it um as a uh, as a guide if you look at the sticker you'll see that um it should match up with the uh the the um, rudder itself so you've got a line there which corresponds to the the, the line on the rudder and i want to make sure that that's popped in the right place so what i'm going to do is just make sure i line up the sticker so essentially I'm looking at this, the rudder itself is sitting so that the line on here, or the line on the graphic there, sits right at the back uh, and lines up with the back of the, the hinge itself. Um, it's different on different aircraft that we've got, so um, it's worth checking, and now I need to put this in a... Uh, a safe place so I don't lose it um, <laughs> I just chucked it over there but now what I can do is when I pop this on I can make sure that I get everything lined up and in fact actually it's pretty close to that that cut out there corresponds to that cut out there so um, it's not uh, it's not a million miles off in fact it's pretty much back so that sticker it's just going to sit there and it hides our uh, our hinge um, you may find that the, the sticker loses its tackiness because obviously we're not attaching the rudder just yet and it will get touched etc but we can always re, re um, energize the stickiness by just adding glue so uh, so not a problem but uh, there we go so that's that's covered over now and um, the other thing we have to do now that our glue has dried and we've got our reinforcing parts in place um, is that this little um, part here 
um, this actually sits in the way of where the, um, the, the battery goes in the actual model. So what we want to do is we want to remove this little sort of uh, protrusion here. Let's just position it so I can show you that protrusion. protrusion. There we go, that little protrusion there. And the part of the keel that sits behind it. Now you should notice that certainly on, on one side of the keel there is a scored line that acts as a guide um, to how you cut it. But that should also correspond with um, the cut line on this forward part. So I'm just going to gently put the, push the knife through that part there. So I've released that. So that's released. And then I'm going to just slice through the keel along that score carefully removing, there we go, so this part's now freed up and I can just remove that from the uh, from the equation. I'm just going to tidy up my cut there, it's a little bit erratic, not that it matters, it's not going to be seen unless you're staring into the cockpit. So that's now removed. Um, our stick is in place, so on to the next chapter. I'm just turning the pages on the, uh, the guide. Right, D10 and D11. We've got a bit more carving to do here. So D10 and D11. Are these two parts here? So this is ten that I'm removing at the moment. Eleven. Go. So we're just going to remove the inner part. Of here which has got a score on so just carefully he said nearly ripping the bottom half carefully cut out There's one. Yeah, that's two. Let's just clear that out as well. So, then we also now need a, uh, a plastics part. This is actually a rigging part. D4. So, all of these plastic parts are kind of small. That is your P4. As you can see, there's some uh, colouring at the top there, um, but uh, the rest of it is just uh, white. Or it's, it's a bit of a bit of Mike Grace's logo in there, ghosted logo. Um, other thing we can do is, if you feel on the back of the part, um, if there's any sort of uh, protruding plastic. Due to the sort of small cuts that have been put, just uh, just sand those off. And the the uh, the two protrusions there make it look like a uh, make it look like a frog. Um, they actually um, are holes for rigging to uh, to go through. Um, 
uh, at the, uh, the central part of the fuselage of the front of the aircraft. And what we're going to do is sandwich these between uh, D10, which I've got in my hand at the moment, and uh, D11, which is, uh, which is this part here. Now, we want to make sure we get these around the right way. Um, so, D10 and D11 should be round, as you can see, they're slightly, slightly different. You've got a, uh, these, these two holes here are cut slightly differently. And we want to make sure that when we bring them together, that they are both in the same direction. And that is this, these face are facing front now. So that will go on top of there and those holes should then line up. But before we sandwich them together, we are just going to pop this part in the middle so that these little rigging holes protrude out the top. Let's just add a little bit of glue to the back of this part. Like so. And then we need to pop that centrally on to D10. So I'm actually going to put probably a half mil of the the, the uh, circular profile of the plastic above as well because I know that we've got one millimeter covering going on top of the edge of these parts so uh, just going to make sure that we've got enough material protruding up through so that we can get to those uh, get to those uh, uh, rigging points so now what we can do is pop the other part on top, D11. So let's just get the glue on the right side of this. So as I said, I'll reiterate, it is um, important that we get these the, uh, the right way around, as I've shown here, and as you can see in the... Um, in the assembly guide to the, the, uh, the printed one supplied with the kit. So get these all lined up like so. There we go. Now, um, what I need to do is get uh, the rest of the, uh, the foam parts liberated for the, uh, the completion of the nose airframe assembly. So we need our uh, D7 parts, which are these ones here. Those are your D7 parts. Um, our D8 parts, or part, I should say, which is uh, this is this actually forms the platform on which the uh, receiver is to be mounted, apart from anything else, and also our uh, D9 part. So, so um, D eight is uh, there's there's I don't think that's that's that yeah that's uh, that's not shaped at all so it can go either way around but our D nine part sits in the middle of that. So we'll just glue that in place. So 
and this doesn't need a great deal of glue because um, the structure will hold everything together. It's not to being pulled apart, it's being constantly pushed into place. So, go. And our two D7 parts actually slot into the two available slots on the front there. So go like so, and on the other side too, we'll just apply some glue to keep those into play in place. Two. Everything you'll 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 find everything is quite flexible at the moment. But don't worry about that because once we've got the um, the outer skin on, uh, everything becomes very stable. Now this D eight. slots into the upper slot on the, uh, was that D, was that uh, D2, there we go, so I'm just going to squish that down a bit, because the slot is very tight, that's better, and when you slot it in, make sure that the sides are flush with the part as well, that makes things easier when we're putting the skin on. Just flush there. And then Obviously, our little assembly that we've made for um, right up on the nose. That's got the slot at the top there. And the two sort of half slots down the bottom there. And they should all uh, match up so that uh, everything can be brought together. So what I'll do is, because everything is so flexible, we can glue them one at a time. Let's get... Uh, our upper panel uh, in place first and we can worry about the other two once that is uh, once that's there so there we go so if we look under here we can then make sure that these front parts of D7 are glued correctly into place on our, our forward um, assembly, like so. So let's just, yeah, excuse me, I've got a bit sniffy, got a bit, of, a bit of hay fever at the moment. It's a beautiful day out there, got the doors open. Uh, so there's a nice amount of airflow. Uh, it's a nice quiet day as well, so. Hopefully we won't get too many disturbances, but you will have to put up with me sniffing now and again. So there we go. We've got uh, those parts in place. Just uh, stand it up like that while, uh, while things dry off. And whilst that is drying off, I'm going to get our first plywood part even though these kits are made of some fairly modern materials we can still use the old plywood it's still a 
a use for it. Nothing, uh, nothing better than a bit of ply. So W1, our first piece. Just liberate that from the grips of the plywood sheet. Easier said than done. <laughs> Let go. <laughs> oh dear. There we are. Where did I put that rudder? Oh, there we go. I'm going to pop that in one of the bags whilst I am here. So just pop that in there. So we know where it is, know where to get it. So I can, I can sort of do a sort of final press of everything. Together now that the glue has dried somewhat. And then our W1 sits at the front there. Now, don't worry if the holes in the foam don't line up perfectly. They're not supposed to. They are supposed to allow the hooks that are actually on the, um, the, the cowl um, to slot in and then rotate into the void that they create behind this uh, plywood firewall, if you like. So that's where we want it to go, like so. And we'll just apply some foam to foam, which works well on plywood as well. Just make sure that the the bottom of the plywood W1 part is level with the bottom of the uh, the foam parts, and that there is and it's flush all of the way around with the uh, with the foam as well. And we're just going to apply a little bit of glue into the. Um, the circle that's been cut out of the plywood. This is where our 4mm magnet goes. And we can just pop a little bit of glue in there. A little bit of excess that I'm going to wipe away. Um, and we can grab our magnet and pop that into place as well. Okay. I've got my one magnet. I've got my Four mil hole, hopefully. I'm just going to pop that into place like so. Nice snug fit. And snip. I can then use one of my S24 stickers. Just pop that over to hold it in place, protect, stop it being pulled out too readily. There we go, there is our airframe complete. Now to move on to the fuselage. <music> so 
So our fuselage needs a few things doing to it before we actually apply it to our airframe. Firstly, obviously, we need to cut it out. So. Here we go. Nice sharp knife still, thankfully. So, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we are going to bevel this. Um, our beveling and scoring guide is right here, fresh out of the uh, assembly guide itself. And before I score, I'm going to bevel. And on this guide, it shows you exactly where that bevel goes. And there are quite a few of them. This even shows here, which I've already done, our little beveling guide for the keel. Uh, I showed you how to do that as we built the, uh, the aircraft up. So I'll show you a little bit of, uh, of how I bevel. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, on a curved surface like this, I'll normally do it while holding the part. I will support it underneath with my fingers, and then using my uh, my sanding stick, I will just bevel the edge and use really sort of go by eye. Um, obviously, it changes the way the light's reflected as the uh, as the bevel gets larger, and it doesn't take a lot to actually uh, get that bevel in place. So, just supporting the material. Uh, we're using quite an aggressive side of the uh, of the sanding stick there, so I've just swapped over. Might take a little bit longer, but at least there's a little more control. So there we go. And on the straight edges um, for uh, for beveling, I tend to pop it to uh, an edge, like here. I've got two mats here, one obviously sitting on the other. And I just bring the part to the edge itself, and then I can actually use that edge to guide my bevel. So if I've got the material right to the edge of that first mat, um, I'm never going to go beyond uh, and over sand the, uh, the bevel. So, And then obviously, however I angle my sanding stick um, provides the angle of the bevel. And here we've got it around about 45 degrees. Obviously you can't get a protractor out and measure it, but uh, it's really sort of something that you do by eye and obviously support the material as you go. Now up here we've got a bit of a step so I can't actually bevel all the way up to that edge so I can actually I'll just pick the material up once again support it from behind and then just gently apply the bevel like so and also the obviously we've got some difficult areas here we've got a bevel these two edges which obviously sit together so what I tend to do is just move one away from the other like that and then use that to then produce the bevel so on, on this particular part there's probably more handheld beveling than there is beveling at the uh, at the edge uh, but sometimes I'll bring it down to the uh, front portion of the building board so I've got the complete table edge to uh, to work with but uh, that's how we're uh, that's how we're going to bevel this particular part so I'll carry on with this and uh, once I've finished we'll come back and start scoring 
actually before we move on to the scoring i just wanted to show you the um, the shallow bevel which is uh, this one right at the uh, the end here once again i'm just going to bring the uh, the part to the uh, the edge there and then i can hold the part firmly and just pop in with the uh, the shallow bevel you notice that i'm not angling this so much um so that i can put in that uh, that shallower bevel as the uh, material when it comes together is uh, uh, much more than a uh, a 45 degree angle or 90 degree angle when it's uh, assembled so there they are put in a nice sort of shallow bevel i don't know if you can see that it's a little more contrasted background to it anyway let's do the other one and then we should have finished the beveling actually i'm going to pick this one up it's uh, a little more difficult to do that um on the edge just because i'm right-handed it help if i'm left-handed but well, ambidextrous but no just going to do this by hand just keeping an eye on it it's on sand there we go so now I can pop this on the guide there like so everything should line up reasonably so Just going to use some um this is essentially tamiya tape um just to hold things down it's a a low tack tape generally used for sort of um plastic model making holding stuff together while they're, they're glue sets but uh, it's quite useful for this too just want to hold everything down while we get those scores in. There we go. And that's that's not that's not big enough. There we go. So we've got uh, a number of little scores up here. I'm going to use obviously my straight edge and my knife, but I'm using the back edge of the knife. If you've never scored um, the this particular foam before, I suggest you probably have a bit of a practice on some of the scrap foam that surrounds these parts. Um, the first score I'm going to put in is the one that goes that runs, you see, from there through to here. Just keeping the, the knife really shallow on the score. And on the other side too. Obviously what I don't want to do is cut cut through. What I want to do is just compress the uh, the material. So on on um, these scores here, we have a corresponding um, position to where that score goes. Um, you can see here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Let's just ah, there we go. makes more sense so the ones at the end there show the uh, where those two go so uh, that's that's why we've got what we've got so I'm using the um, the position 
of these or the angle of these uh, score tails here um, to position the um, the ruler straight edge and the first position uh, with this dotted line I'm just going to start the, the, uh, the score there and then when I move down to the next one I'm going to keep that as parallel as possible and then move to the next dotted line I think you're not having to be super accurate here, but uh, right. So I'm now, because I can't, because my ruler's in the way, I'm now going to shift over to doing this side from the uh, the bottom upwards. So, I turn around I can then do the other so sorry you can come in I headed the shot there just scoring down to approximate position that way that's it there we go so I think that's all of our scoring in place so now what we're going to do is just remove our tape and then we can start shaping the skin so it makes it easier for the installation let's just move that to one side for now and we can start just pulling this material into the sort of shape that we will want it once we come to put it onto the frame. So, bend those up like so. Um, what we can do with this particular score is just loosen it a bit using the less aggressive side of our sanding stick we can just remove a little material from the inside and then that means when we come to put this in place that sort of sets up quite nicely like so What we want is for these to curve around the front of the fuselage there, where we're forming almost a full circle. And we can use the effectiveness of the glue to uh, ensure that they come into uh, the correct shape. Now, the other thing that we need to do to the fuselage before we attach it is there are a few... Uh, plastic parts that need to be uh, assembled onto the inside of the fuselage, namely uh, P5, which there are two of. And these actually are rigging retaining pieces. 
I've got uh, once again very small see like a jumping flea pops off Go. No. That is your P5. It's just a bit of plastic with a little hole in. That hole, I'm just going to make sure that it's uh, opened out. I'm just going to pop a bit of wire through it just to make sure that I can get my rigging tool through go uh, do the other one too and then we're going to pop those into place just above where the uh, lower wing will come out of the, uh, the fuselage and you should see where it's where the hole has been cut in the fuselage which will indicate where this needs to be so in fact what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I've done this before just just came to mind now I'm just going to thread these onto the piece of wire this is a bit of uh, it's a 24 gauge it's the stuff that's used for the uh, control rods so you can always cut a little bit off because those control rods are used for all of our kits and some of them are a lot longer so just threaded those on you'll see on the fuselage there are a couple of tiny little holes there and there just before the or just after the apex of the uh, um, the, the cutout for the lower wing um, so what I'm going to do is put a little bit of uh, glue around the hole on either side like so and then if my plan works I should be able to pop the wire through and then pull it out while holding the bit of plastic and then, hey presto, it should be in the right place. Do it on the other side too. In we go. Ah, that didn't work so well. Try again. I was being far too enthusiastic. There we go. So we'll let those dry in place. And then, we're going to put some rigging through them. Let's just get our rigging out. Now on the front here it says hot tips before using the enclosed rigging wire remove any residual elasticity by hanging weight from the thread for 24 hours. So that's what you should do. Um, unravel this um, and then just stretch it with some weights uh, before using it. Now, I haven't done that. I'm a bad boy. But, for the sake of brevity, so we need 500 each side. 500 mil. Half a metre. So, I'm very... Fortunately, got uh, measurement on here, so that's actually the the width of this board is fifty seven. So if I just go to fifty, there we go. That's around about fifty, and then just cut off there. Another 50. Like so, there we go. Marks. Okay, bring it up back. Now, we 
before I thread this through, actually, no, I will thread this through first. So I'm just going to use my um, threading tool. I'm using the one that I had on the bench rather than the one that I've been given fresh in the kit. I'm just going to pop the rigging tool through from the inside to the outside and just grab A fresh rigging wire and pull it through. There we go. And then I'm just going to pop a little stopper knot into the rigging there. Go. Cut off the excess. It'll save us a couple of micrograms. And then pull out. And then I have my rigging wire where I want it. And do exactly the same on the other side. From the inside out. Doing it this way means that you don't have to pull a whole load of rigging through the hole. Potentially opening the hole up or um, damaging the rigging. Go. I'm holding on to these plastic parts as I pull through. Um, Obviously, we haven't waited that long for the glue to, to dry, so uh, those plastic parts will obviously stop the rigging pulling out through the foam as well, um, being a lot uh, stronger than the uh, the foam itself for, uh, for that kind of duty. So, stop or not. Cut off the excess. Through it comes. There we go. So we've got rigging both sides. All I can do now is just neatly spool this up for now so it's uh, easier to manage while we're building the rest of the aircraft because we don't need this until um, certainly the lower wings are on. There we go. Right, so on to our next step, which is to get that skin, the fuselage skin, onto the airframe. So you can see there is a, uh, a little slot in the, uh, the skin fuselage, and there is a little slot occupying nubbin on the keel so we should be able to bring those two to mate up and that is our 
position, hopefully. It should be a fairly tight fit. And that should mean that when you bring the fuselage skin to the fore there, it should sit so that the plywood is just proud of the fuselage skin itself. So at the moment, mine's actually covering it over. So my skin could do with sliding back a bit. And if I bring the rear of the fuselage together at the back there, it could do with sliding back about a millimeter. So I'm going to make a slight adjustment to allow this to slide back a little further. And that's just going to, I'm just going to remove a little bit of my protrusion on the keel. So this is why we drive fit, just to make sure that we can get everything together correctly. So, and sometimes the parts don't come out as perfect as we'd like, but there we go. So, if I bring those sides up now, bring my fuselage rearwards slightly. They are certainly fitting a lot better than they did before. So now I'm happy with the position of the fuselage skin. I can now start gluing it in place. So firstly, we're going to glue it along the, uh, the, the base of our keel. That should take us up to that point there. And then all the way back to uh, it's just certainly on the edges of our last former there. And then we'll put some on the forward part forward former here where it comes to rest. Then we can glue it in place. You notice the tail skid comes up through the slot at the uh, the back of the uh, fuselage there, so just make sure everything is slid back in place. Make sure that's sitting centrally at that part there. Uh, this will be covered over with a sticker um, in the fullness of time, the fullness of the build. Make sure everything is pressed down well. Now, when we bring the sides up, what we want is for the rear portion here, this this bit here, um, to sit parallel to the top of the. Uh, the keel there. This is where the uh, the horizontal stabilizer sits. So we want a good platform for that that's nice and flat and straight. So you've also got, you'll notice, you've got a slot uh, just here 
and obviously you want to make sure that that slot is available because we have a piece going in there that sits over this skin um, and and provides a platform for the um, the rest of the tail skid to be installed. So just pay some attention to the uh, the rear there and we'll, we'll go for it. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, uh, stick the fuselage sides down up to this point here and then we will manage the uh, the, the rest of the installation of the fuselage in the, in a second step if you like so what we want to do now is um, ensure that these sides come together um, and form a good join so what we're going to do is run a bead of glue along each side we're going to let that glue dry so that we're really using that sort of contact also obviously putting glue into places where the side is going to come into contact with the frame and do it on both sides as well. We'll tidy up the uh, the nozzle on this before I proceed. Just make it uh, easier. Just running that bead down the beveled edge. So on the back there, we can swap over and do the other beveled edge. So we've now got all the glue in all the right areas, all along the beveled edges, um, up on the rear as well, and on the frame too. And we're just going to let that dry, and then we're going to very carefully bring it all together. Um, and uh, as soon as I do that, I will um, I'll start videoing again. Right, here we go. So we're going to bring the sides up first, making sure we're getting, getting a good mate between the two 45 degree bevels on the side there. And then what I want to make sure is that the position at the back here is correct for platforming the horizontal stabilizer. So just pop that in place. And then bring those sides up. And repeat the process on the other side. So that's all sitting nicely now. We will finesse these corners once we've got them glued down, once we're happy with the, uh, the positioning. As 
done, I've found the best way to smooth these joins so that we reduce the um, sort of the, the, the white areas that are showing is by just using the, the back of the, the fingernail or the thumbnail um, and rubbing that right on the edge of each of the sides. So you start almost producing a very, uh, very tight curve. You also may find that some of the, uh, the glue uh, bobbles off at the same time if uh, usually there's uh, a little bit of excess there and that should just sort of it bobbles off and, and comes off as you rub and you also just complete I mean almost completely get rid of that, uh, that white line that uh, can sit between the uh, the two bits of foam where the, obviously the print doesn't go around the, around the edges so uh, a bit of a bobble of glue happening there let's come off let's come off too fantastic so um, pay attention to the other side too and it's just a sort of about pushing those the, the tips of those 45 degree bevels um, together on both sides so that you reduce that white space the other tool you can use is the um, the ball um, and that can be used for doing the same sort of thing but um, I find the, the fingernail still is quite good because you get more of a feel. I mean, you're in direct contact with the, uh, with the material, so you can really sort of uh, gain immediate idea of what's, uh, what's going on underneath. Obviously, also the other thing to check as you're bringing it all together is that the top of the uh, the fuselage skin is is hitting all the right places, all the shoulders on um, on these formers. So now we're looking at bringing the front of the fuselage skin to bear on the um, on the airframe, and what we're looking for here, bring it more centrally, is for the skin to come right up to the foam but not go over um, the, uh, the plywood. So sort of like that. And also, obviously, we want it to be fairly consistent along the, um, the platform that we've got here and the structure that we've got there. Um, and when it comes into contact at the um, the, the the curved part of the airframe there that that 45 degree bevel is is sitting slightly proud so that when we put the skin over the bottom of the aircraft and the nose um, we can bring that together really nicely and uh, and using the fingernail method um, make sure that we don't get any white edging so that's what we're looking for
So what we can do now is we can start applying some glue to these areas. So we've got a little coming together down here. We'll just make sure we get some glue in those areas. Like so. And then we'll just run a little glue along the outer edge of our curved bits of airframe under there. And then we will also apply glue to the edge of our little platform structure and obviously also to the double foam firewall at the front. Put a bit along the edge on that side too. And the bit that's going to be difficult to get to, but not too bad, is that second uh, former that's there. Let me just bend the, uh, the fuselage out of the way. Not too much though, because obviously you don't want to stick a crease in it. There we go. And what we're going to do before that glue dries off, is we're just going to bring everything to bear so that we get a bit of a transfer of the sticky stuff so that we can take advantage of the contact adhesive nature when we come to stick it together so we're just going to allow that to uh, to dry off and uh, we'll come back and stick it together once it has okay a few minutes have gone by we should be able to bring these together now. I'm going to do one side at a time so I can ensure that everything lines up as I want it. Just making sure that I'm parallel with the, uh, the plywood at the front there. I've got a little bit of protrusion at the top too. Let's, uh, we didn't leave it for long enough. The contact adhesive nature of the <laughs> of the foam to foam is not taking effect at the moment. Full effect. It's it's certainly gripping on, but. Um, parts that are under most stress from being formed are pulling away a little bit but not too bad nothing we can't cope with so let's do this second side Pressing everything together, you don't have to press too hard, or you might get some sort of distortions like that. But, uh, just making sure that the adhesive takes effect. Good. 
So that's uh, that's looking pretty wonderful now. Um, just want to make sure everything is uh, sticking, staying in place. And we can always come back and uh, push everything back down again. Um, should everything pull away. Um, but uh, so that's that's where we uh, leave that in the um, in the manual. Um, it actually shows leaving the um, the the first of those fuselage formers um, bare. But um, that's we've updated the um, uh, the the instructions now, and we're bringing this skin right up to uh, the back of the, the plywood um, otherwise you do get a little bit of a, uh, a white line around the when the cowl goes on nothing you can't obviously you can paint over that and, uh, and make it good but um, this uh, this obviously uh, reduces the need for doing that uh, that particular action So, leave that, fiddle with that all day. Um, we are going on to uh, Z6. That one there. Let's just grab that out. And of course, this, once again, needs a bit of attention before it is put in place. So we need to uh, bevel, and we need to score. Let's just take a look. So there's our bevel and score guide. And that's where it uh, pops on, where well, we can um, take care of it. But before we do that, we've got the bevels down the edge here um, to, uh, to deal with. So let's pop our bevels in. This shouldn't take too long. It's quite easy to do and the hold as well. It's not a, a particularly uh, cumbersome part um, and it's quite sturdy as well. But uh, always pop those fingers at the back there to, uh, to support. Give your nails a, a sand at the same time as well. So desire. So that's our bevel Okay, so let's get scoring. I'm not too worried about the scores down here because the um part doesn't have to curve uh, particularly that much at that point so but what I am going to do is just pop those shy of the scores at the top there where it needs to curve more so let's get to it Back of the knife.
And now we can make sure that each of those scores is manipulated before we make the installation. So this part, obviously, the turtle deck, it's uh, affectionately known. That actually sits right there, like so. So this back edge here should sit just below that, um, that ridge there at the back. So that's a good way to uh, to judge its position and if that should push the this particular former slightly forward so be it and then the rest of the parts should fix into place so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to adhere it um, sort of um, one side first and then um, lock it down to the uh, the other side once the uh, first side has dried. So I'm going to start on this uh, port side here, um, run some glue down the edge like so. As you noticed I've already dry fitted it, I'm just um, making sure I know exactly where it's going. Let's pop that down. And then, a little more glue on this side. Right down to where that little raise is just at the uh, at the back there. So I'm also going to pop a little glue on the top of the formers where it'll be difficult to get to. And just a little bit more generous. I should be able to get to that side, no problem. But uh, I'm just going to bring the two sides together, just to just to introduce them, as it were, <laughs> just to make sure that they've all got glue on where they should, and we're going to let that dry off. And bring together once the uh, the glue has dried and we've got a good contact adhesive. We'll start this process of putting our turtle deck on. Let's just get rid of our beveling guide for now. Put that over here. So I'm going to mate up the rear of this with our um, little cut in there. And then just bring the two sides together like that. and then it curves in there too. So just pushing this together quite firmly so that glue gets every opportunity to hold this part in place exactly where it's put. You can, if you want, you can start the process of bringing these two parts together as well. You've got a little, a little bit of beading already with that glue. That was quite generous. So 
this is just helping the whole thing to glue together as well as smoothing that uh, that edge somewhat too this is where a lot of the pressure is um, to to part the two pieces where you've got this sort of slight change of angle just there um, so it's worth putting some effort and energy into making sure that that's nicely positioned so obviously we've got this cut out here for the uh, the protrusion for the headrest um, on uh, on there and then this should all come together it's quite tight you can squeeze this because the the foam the internal two mil foam is is quite squishable it means that you can sort of squish these together and the glue gets an opportunity to really sort of hold on to the uh, the join so So this is just dry fitting at the moment, so I can get a feel for where I need to put my uh, efforts. And certainly, once again, this this area here is uh, is where it needs to be. So everything else seems to fit quite uh, snugly, neatly. Um, it's just here that needs a little bit of uh, pressure to make sure that those two parts join. So. Right, let's apply glue once again. I'm just going to peel that. A little more opportunity to get the glue into the places I need it to go. So let's just run it into this first side here. This um, super knot really makes this process. Uh, a little easier and then run it along the turtle deck edge as well having the glue on both sides means that you go back instant grab and it's more likely to uh, to stay although we could use the um, the tape here to actually help us as well if we uh, if we so desired I haven't actually done that myself um, just gonna make sure we've got a glue in all areas right just talking of glue in all areas let's make sure we've got a little bit on the uh, the former at the top of the turtle deck there so just make sure we've got a little bit down there too. I'll just make some, I'll just transfer that onto Turtle Deck as well. So that uh, helps and assists us when we come to uh, to bring that all together. Excellent. Whilst that's, um, that's drying, um, we can uh, start looking at the, uh, the tail feathers. So, which is really sort of moving on to stage three. Z2. Which is this one here. Um, Z, that should be Z4, I think. I've obviously misnumbered them on here because I've got two Z2s. Naughty me. We'll adjust that for the uh, for the actual product. So let's just take our Z4. Go and with that we're also going to grab from our parts back here our carbon fiber strip 
not the um, rod but the strip um, so it's got a uh, so it's got a, um, a squared shape to it rather than a round shape and we need to adhere that or stick that to the leading edge of the elevator like so now there should be enough material to run the entire length of that leading edge which on mine probably got a millimeter too much so i'm just going to chop a little bit off there we go and then i'm going to run a bead of glue down that edge just as well my hands shake at the same rate otherwise I'd be all over the place Now this it's it's actually not a square profile it's oblong so um, what you want is the the, um, the the widest part is is one mil the um, the thinnest is half mil so you want the one mil seeing as this is one mil material one mil foam you want the one millimeter side to come in contact there so we get the full benefit of its strength now no doubt you will probably get a little bit of glue squeezing out what we'll do is we'll let that cure dry and then we'll uh, we'll tackle any of the um, glue issues we should get um, I want to do something interesting now it's not something that you have to do um, but with using my new tool, what I'm going to try and do is reduce the white of the edge of some of these parts. So this is the horizontal stabilizer, which sits on the on the aircraft just there, um, and obviously we have this white edge to it where the laser is cut through and it's exposed to the um, the internal white foam um just going to sand off the little stubs that are left after removing it from from the uh from the sheet um of course what you can do is you can actually color that edge um some people use felt tips others paint it um, you can um, you can also use a, a, a chalk or um, a pastel or something like that. Um, I'm just going to try and um, basically close close the gap by using the uh, the ball the the small ball small diameter ball. And just run it down the edge. Got to be quite careful doing this because if you go over onto the material, you can squash the actual material itself so i'm just going to it's got to be you've got to be pretty even with it as well even with the pressure otherwise you can um you can start the process of the, the a warp in the material but um i'm just gonna press it down like so and turn it over and do exactly the same on the other side Hopefully, not that we'll eliminate it, but hopefully we'll reduce that uh, that white edge. And also, obviously, we're uh, creating a sort of a 
a point at, uh, in the material at the angle of attack. So is it becoming more aerodynamic? Well, there we go. We've certainly reduced that white edge um, to a great extent. And we could do the same at the back here as well on the uh, on the elevator. Let's get rid of those tabs. So let's give that a go anyway. It's a it, certainly something that you could do if you've got one of these tools I wouldn't um, I wouldn't try doing it with um, anything else certainly not the um, the back of the knife or, uh, or that sort of thing this is uh, this is slightly more precise But it's um yeah feels good feels like it might be working quite well yeah no, that's not too bad it hasn't warped it's nice and flat um, so we just need to bring these two parts together now, like so. The way we do that is through four stickers. That's four through two, seven. On the sticker sheet, they're just in this corner here. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a slurp of tea. That's rather good. So let's work out which goes where. So let's pick off S4. I think S4 lives here. Just there. That's it. You notice that there are graphics to match up. So I would say a seven comes on the opposite side. Just there. That will do. Let's bring these together now. Now, what we want to do is have a bit of a gap between the two so that the um, elevator can move up and down. Now, that gap should be about the same width as the carbon fibre that's there already. So, like so. that that's probably too much so great thing is with this is you can peel off give it another go i'm going to do it this way up actually because there's a little sort of um the the white of the sticker is showing 
somewhat and that gives a good gauge of what's possible so they've got, I've got plenty of up up elevator there so that's not the only those are not the only stickers as I said there are four so let's just grab S6 Six loops just there. So S five sits on the other side. tweezers on this one it's a little bit easier to uh, get it positioned correctly the great big fingers aren't in the way fantastic so there we have our tail feathers well the horizontal ones anyway so let's pop that to one side oh before before we do that there is one thing i have to do there's a slot on the uh, left hand side i'm just going to put the knife through there because we've put a sticker over it and this is for the slot there is for the control board to uh, it's where it positions so we're just going to make sure that that's still available to do so and we will now turn our attentions back to the fuselage and we will slowly and carefully bring our turtle deck into place making sure that we get that 45 degree angle on both sides mating up so that we lose that white mark between the two parts. Go. That, that I'm happy with. Feel that there's a little bit of glue there that wants to bead up, so just let it do that. As the fingers work quite well, and once it has beaded up, to uh, moving it off the playing field. Just going to use the ball in this area here just to manipulate the. Foam, so it's all sitting neatly. No white gap. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Great stuff. Ah, fuselage is coming along nicely. I like it in these um, these RAF or RFC colours. Very much different from the um, from the French. Certainly from the old old silver. Excellent. Okay, so now what is called for? is we can attach our tailplane onto the 
patch at the rear. Now you'll notice on the tailplane itself, there's a tiny little cutout. I'll show you. Tiny little cutout there. Right at that's right in the middle. That's there. And there's also a cutout at the uh, the the back of the um, horizontal stabilizer, just there. And that's to assist us. And positioning this correctly on the aircraft itself. Now we need to make sure that the elevator has room to maneuver. Um, it should mean that the front edge, leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer sits going up to the, uh, the rear edge of our turtle deck and just make sure that it sits in the middle and then the we can see through the little gap there to make sure that the rear notch is also central to the uh, to the aircraft. And it takes nothing more than a few splodges of glue, and we should be able to put those uh, put those tail feathers on. So, being relatively generous, obviously it's quite a, a structural part. It's also part of the flying mechanism, so we need it to be fairly sturdily in place. And then I'm just going to pop, pop it where it should be. I'm just going to check that it's sitting level. That looks pretty level to me on the fuselage. If I'm happy with the position, I'm actually going to let that sit and dry. We should take a good, probably 25 minutes or so, um, to uh, let the um, the glue dry as is. But we'll get a really nice strong bond because of uh, because of that. So um, let's um, let's let it uh, do its thing. Tails on firmly. Fantastic. So next step is we can attach our rudder. Good. I haven't lost it. The rudder's still here. Amazing. If only I could get it. There we go. And the, the rudder is, is literally a, an attachment like so. You literally just glue it in place. Um, make sure we have the, we still have the movement of our um, elevator with the, uh, with the rudder in place. But um, yeah, this, uh, as predicted, not enough stick there from our, uh, our sticker. So what we're going to do is re-sticky it. And obviously you also put um, a decent amount of glue on the, the hinge too. And what we've got to remember is that there's a um, there's a slot in our rudder here to do. So I'm just going to make sure we open that up. That's for the control horn for the rudder, and that goes in from the the right hand side, from the starboard side. Um, so when we glue it here, we also want to make sure that you notice there's in the hinge itself. The hinge has a uh, quite a big hole in it, and we want to make sure that um, that hole sits. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so anyway, let's just get our rudder in place so that. It's fixed. We'll worry a 
about the depth of the um oh there's one thing i haven't done well remembered so whilst that glue is still tacky i'm going to take the rudder off and i'm going to do my little trick of reducing that white margin around the edge oh lucky i remembered that when i did flip it over watch out because i've obviously I've got glue on that side so it's going to start want to stick down go it's all done it's looking better let's put a little more glue on there and we can see where the glue goes still moving and I just want to leave that rudder to set once again um, whilst uh, whilst it is and we can start preparing those control horns that we can attach so plastics plastics is what we need there they are there So the control horns consist of uh, P26, uh, P25, which are the actual control horns themselves. We shall free them. This is a little bit of work that we need to do on them before they're installed. There we go. Now, these should fold over on one another to create a, a stronger structure like so um, if they are a little difficult to fold what we don't want them is to obviously them them opening up again um, we're just going to is that they have been scored by the laser down the center so they fold together um, but what we're going to do is just encourage that score a little bit more just by running the knife gently down it and then that makes it easier to fold over the other thing I'm going to check is um, if there's any if there's any sort of residual plastic on the other side of those on the inside or what will be the inside of the uh, of the holes and if there is just to remove it so it'll stop the uh, the two holes coming together perfectly so happy with that so i can pop a little bit of uh, glue on the inside there avoiding the holes but it doesn't matter if you do get it over the holes because we can always thread a um piece of wire through there just to open them up again so just going to bring those together let them fall apart again so we've got plenty of glue on either side and once that glue has dried we'll bring them together and do exactly the same for our, uh, our second control horn
Clint. Let's get him in there. Go. dry off and in the meantime we will gather our base plates for the control horns so 27 and 24 Obviously, the uh, the one with the blue on is for the for the rudder, um, and obviously when the rudder is on, um, the rudder control horn is on. Um, its background will be the underside of the elevator, so which is this. Uh, canvas color okay bring the two halves together and get my A bit of piano wire just to push through those holes to make sure they will allow our control rod to enter when the time comes. I've just I've just folded these over, and as you can see, I'm just pushing the that bit of wire through just to make sure I usually on these myself use the outer rather than the um, inner hole but um, obviously the inner provides you with more sensitivity on the um, on the controls okay so This should be the one used on the elevator. There we go. That's that. Sits in that slot there. So what we're going to do is just add some of our glue to the base plate. It should squidge all around and hold everything in place. Of this on, get my big hands out of the way. Go. Then this one goes onto the rudder. So just looking at the graphic on the base plate you see there's a tiny little bit of white there which should correspond with mm, <laughs> well there we go probably needed a little more white that way but um, with the laser cutter you can never be absolutely bang on well not all the time anyway so there might be a small amount of overlap and there we go that's that's where it's going to sit so there is a little bit of overlap there you can see but um, we'll live with it and then I'll do 
obviously provides good control for the uh, the rudder. So because I haven't glued it yet, just pop it off, add the glue, pop it back on again. going to use the tweezers to push everything home. Good. I can leave those to dry and that glue will give it a very good bond for what we, uh, we need it to do. Okay. So the last part of this stage of the fuselage um, is we need to put the shroud around our tail skid and to do that we need a few little pieces one of them is z4 which is this little piece here on the uh, fuselage uh, sheet. Just chop that out. There we go. And that simply slots under under there, like so. So this is currently just a, a dry fit. Rear piece needs lifting up a, a little bit. That should slot forward like so. There we go. In fact, that's such a nice tight fit that. I think I'm just going to leave it there, or maybe not. Let's see. Add a little bit of glue, maybe. Nope, I'm going to leave it where it is. It's pretty rock solid. Okay, so that creates a little edge all around here to which we are going to apply a uh, little surround. So, on to creating our little surround. Z5. Now this bit gets scored to death. Such such a tiny little piece. It uh, it really gets a uh, a beating, as you can see from our bevel guide so that's where it goes I'm not even going to bother sticking this down because you can you can literally bevel it by just pushing the knife into it it's it's not like you're drawing it along a great long portion of the material you literally just using the, the little indications at the side there to uh, pop in a crease like so it doesn't matter if it goes out of position just reposition it and continue on your way so and after this I'm going to bevel it as well
this is one of the most intricate parts of the uh, of the build um, especially in in foam don't normally have to get this this intricate but making scale models can demand this sort of precision now and again so I'm just going to uh, bevel the um, the outer edges so that when it sits on the fuselage um, we don't have any or too much in the way of gap Once again, this is a, obviously such a small part that it would be foolish to try and do it up the side of the the edge of the mat. It's just something that can be done while hand holding. And this upper edge, which is a little more difficult, but can be accomplished. These two um, edges here and here will um, it'll fold over and uh, and they'll meet at the leading edge of the of the whole structure. So if we've got a bevel in there, that means that the printed parts should come together and certainly reduce that uh, white edge. So we should have a good leading edge. Just going to to reinforce it there and there so let's just fold that up through and all of the all of the um, scoring that we've done should allow the whole thing to curve let's just get rid of that so it could make it easier for you to see so they should all sort of curve creating a kind of a an oval pocket like so so when it's applied to the skid back Should all wrap around quite neatly using that little base plate that we just put in as a sort of a, a positioning point for that lower edge. So what we can do is just get some, some glue in the areas that it's needed. So along the, the base, that part that we just slid in, all down there and then across the um, the hump basically edge of the hump and then at the front of the uh, the skid itself so we're just going to do a quick wrap to transfer the glue over to where it's needed from the, the little part so on the other side get rid of 
then and let that dry off somewhat. We might not let it go completely dry, but then we will fold it onto the, uh, the tail skid. Okay, I've given it about a minute, so it's still a little on the wet side. Then I can start pressing things into place. So uh, it seems to be working, working well. Just a bit of smoothing with the ball. Of the handle of the knife, it's always, it's always quite useful. Pressing and prodding. Now it seems to have done the trick. Pretty fine, as you can see. There we go. Very scale. Okay, so that is the entire tail section done. Our fuselage skinned to a point, and so the next step is to create the lower wings. Before we grab the wings themselves, um, we are going to create um, some of the ribs that are used. Um, the ribs are pretty sparse on these kits. Um, the lower wings just have the uh, one outer rib and a, a, a sort of a central rib setup. Um, so the first part we need is from our two mil sheet and that's D14 and that comes in um, in uh, one part but you divide it into two so D14 is this one here it should have D14 uh, inscribed into the uh, foam itself second um, and all we need to do is there should be a score down the middle of the, the, uh, the part and we just need to pop the knife down that score to s divide this into two parts So we now have two tiny little ribs. We're going to um, shroud them in a uh, sticker, S8, S9. Let's just pull out. So this should really um, cover 
three sides of the uh, of the rib and uh, obviously uh, the angles here should go up onto the sides of the the rib itself and the uh, rib can sit centrally on the sticker now this is uh, this is a fairly um, tricky thing to do although you can make it easier on yourself by using this technique which is just positioning the rib into the center of the sticker like so using tweezers etc and then you can pull the sides there's the dog being woken up by somebody in the car park Okay, so this this rib obviously has a graphic on it as well, so we'll be aware of that when we are adding it um, to our wing. But uh, in the meantime, just get the, um, the sticker in place on the rib. Let's pop that to one side and repeat the process for S9. Stick it down on the surface, like so. We have our rib. The uh, angle on the rib facing upwards. Pop this centrally onto the sticker. go and then fold our sticker onto the sides of our rib there we go excellent so now we can get our wings lower wings The Newport 17 was known as a sesquiplane rather than a biplane, which means that the lower wings have less than uh, half the surface area, I think. Uh, I think that's the qualifying um, statistic. Um, yeah, half the less than half the surface area of the top wing, so it's a, a sesquiplane rather than biplane technically okay so these wings um, obviously have got uh, graphics and ribs and all sorts uh, on them they also have a score that runs down there and the idea is that you use that score to fold the wing carefully and gently because that should allow you to just sort of break the back as it were like so so you've got an angle like that um, but it doesn't split on the top and of course that then that having that ridge across there makes the uh, the wing that much more sturdy um, and the rib that you put on there should be the one that has the appropriate graphic that matches the uh, the roundel there so that looks to be the correct one for the job so that will get placed there with a drop of glue to uh, to keep it attached the idea is that the rib having the angle it does will help keep the, um, the the bend in the in the wing itself once we've got this positioned 
if there is any overhang, um, we can always trim it if required. Looks like there might be a little bit at the back there. So. Let's press that down. Sticker in. Go and just nip that bit off at the back. There we go. So that's one rib in place. Just using the back of the knife now just to make sure that the uh, sticker is adhered to the rib just to make it neat really there we go the um the grade area there that you see um we're putting some uh, more reinforcement on the uh, um the bottom of that wing so uh, that comes later so wing gently folded over go set in place it should be fairly obvious where the ribs go there is a little um a mark there to which you can uh, put the rib it's obviously printed on the inside and the other thing to, to make note of um, is that there is a slot in the wing too and that's for the um, interplane strut and just want to make sure that that sits on the outside of the uh, of the rib um, sticker there that sits on the outside of the rib so that when the um, uh, the uh, parts put into place it doesn't try and penetrate into the rib it actually just sits to the to the side of it that sticker's not wanting to stick right so I can just see my slot on the outside there go and there's a little excess there I can trim Job done let's get just make sure that the sticker is stuck Okay, now it's all about joining the um, the wings together in the centre. And to do that, we need a few more foam pieces and a plastic piece too. So, the foam piece we need is D13. and also D12. So D12 has a few has a couple of scores in it that allows it to sort of bend at an angle and that's basically because the wings are set at an angle as well so it allows us to um, incorporate that into the build. So this little uh, part here, D13. Um, once again, we it's got a score down the middle of it, but we're not going to cut right through entirely because this actually forms um, a single rib, obviously four millimetres thick. So we're just going to cut through it so that we can fold it in on itself 
and glue it together. So, just give it a little bit more. So, I'm just going to put some glue on the inside and then we can fold it over to create our double rib. One double rib created. Now we need a plastic part. Uh, this is to reinforce our uh, little um, central spar piece. P6 is the bit we need. And once again, that's scored two. So what we'll, what we'll do is... We'll pop that on the outside. So the scores are both the scores on both pieces are on the same side. Um, and that'll allow the whole thing to flex backwards when we need it to. So we'll just bring those together, let that dry off over there, stick our double ribs over there as well, make sure they're staying together, looks good. And in the meantime, we will make our lower wing brace, which consists of W something. Let's have a look. WB. WB. Wing brace. There we go. Wing brace one. Wing brace two. WB. Who thought of that? So these are two mil parts. They're literally used for holding the wing in place while the glue dries. They should just slot together like so. No need to really glue them. They're, uh, it's Solid stuff. Probably need it at an angle, won't we? So, creative one. And so, these will sit. Together, dries off and it gives us a, uh, a modicum of dihedral as well. The dihedral will actually be set um, by the uh, putting it in the fuselage too because there is a there is an amount of dihedral on these pads here. Right we'll just clear those away, get our little central rib and uh, brace and we need to pop these two together um, I'm going to have the plastic on the forward facing part 
and then the rib can just sit over and obviously the two slots go together to create this sort of cruciform um, fixture so let's just put a little dab of glue on there to uh, hold them together all of this will uh, be hidden within the fuselage once the wing is installed so um, that's uh, have to be a massive amount of neatness I just want to make sure sorry I got my head in there again <laughs> Now, obviously, these little protrusions go up through the holes in the wings there, and then that should come to rest centrally on the uh, on the central rib riblet. Like so, so once again, we can get the glue out it's quite a tight fit so you can pinch these together um, we do get variation in the in the sort of two millimeter foam so sometimes it can be a little bit uh, easier to uh, to slot on but uh, obviously we want we want it really to be as consistent as possible It's all sitting nicely. There we go. So we'll get the other uh, the other wing on too. Bring that all together. Get it onto the brace, and then just let the uh, the glue do its thing. so I can see what's going on. Good, I'm just going to pop a little, little more weight than that. There we go. Okay, we'll just let that sit there until the glue dries. Oh, that's not too bad. Didn't stick. Right, that's the end of the wing brace. No longer required. We've got a fuselage. We've got a wing. So, what's the next process? Well, first off, I've got a little bit of protruding rib, which I'm just going to nip off. There we go. So, and then what we're going to do Let's pop our wing up 
onto our fuselage. So it should be a pretty good, pretty tight fit. So you've got your you've got your little cuttings here, there, and there, and the back of the wing should just tuck into it. You might need to just squeeze the fuselage just a little to get them uh, them in. But as soon as they're in, you should then the, the leading edge of the wing should actually sit pretty well into the forward edge of the, the cutout for those wings. So, and it should sit nicely in place with a, as you can see there, an amount of dihedral um, quite naturally um, sitting where it uh, where it needs to. So we can now um, pop a, a spot of glue into that cavity and get those wings attached. So the wings are going to be sitting against this sort of area here, obviously the edges of the fuselage just there, that inner frame too, just there. And some of those edges onto there. Very good. So And the real indicator is obviously where the uh, where the apex of the top of the wing sits up into the cutout. So that's where we want it to be. There we go. And it's all it's all there. So just pop that on the uh, on the deck. And it should hold. So uh, once that's in, the next step is uh, to actually cover the underside of the wing with the um, forward part of the fuselage, which is Z13. Let's just gather Z13. Z13 also needs a little beveling and a little scoring. So you can see here we need to bevel these curved edges here um, because they will be coming up against these curved edges here. And we need to score through from there to the rear, which I think I can probably do without needing the guide. So you can see from there to there. Is now neatly fold up like so. Oop. Just need a bit of encouragement. You can do if you want to. Be a little bit careful, but um, if you fold them the other way and just give them a quick 
going over with the sanding stick. Be a little bit easier to uh, bend into. Obviously, the glue will do a good job of holding those down eventually. But uh, there we go. Just a little bit more on that side. Okay, now let's just put that bevel into those curves there. It's kind of distracting underneath the uh, part. I'm just putting that bevel in. It doesn't take long. Side. And then once we've done that, we can dry fit this part into place. Oh, actually, we can dry fit it, but there's a little bit of reinforcement that we are going to add to it in the form of a plastic part. Plastic parts, this sort of meshy type piece here, E7. And that, it's fairly obvious where that goes, that sits just there. So let's add a little bit of the glue. This is a, an all over job. Put on all of the, the lattice itself. And this gap is, uh, is where the where the some of the battery sits, so hence having this reinforcement piece helps with the longevity of the uh, and the integrity of this area. So popping them into place sits obviously sits inside these edges. You can see. Probably there. There we go. So it sits. So you've still got these forty-five degree bevels at the side there, ready to match up to the uh, the edges of the fuselage. And then we've got our slot in here, which should take in that slot over there. So that should allow me thing to marry up just going to give it a bit of a pinch so that goes through the slot I can obviously if I want to just open up that slot a bit as well if necessary which I think I might do just give it some Increase in width just by a fraction of a millimeter. This is all going to be covered up anyway. So is the corners. There we go. 
just going to trim a little bit of excess off the back of the ribs here now that everything's in place. There we go. Just so this sits nicely in place. Okay, that should all push together nicely. So, a few elements to glue here to think about while gluing. We've got the uh, the back edge, of course. Yeah, we want to bring together. That central rib there. And obviously the section we want mating up here at the front too. Um, the other place obviously that we would like uh, the glue to sustain is when these come into contact with the underside of the, the wing itself. So we just... on that too. And then we will bring it all together. Make sure we have glue transferred onto all surfaces. Just let that dry off for a little while and then bring it all together. And then what have we got after we've done that? Oh, we have to put our reinforcement parts on on the underside of the wing, and that will obviously complete the uh, that particular process. And then we can move on to undercarriage. But obviously trying to get everything as central as possible. Use a little helping hand. good. The uh, sides here are towing out slightly um, just to follow the curvature of the fuselage itself. A bit of balling up of some of the excess glue. is quite good as, as we've seen before for compressing the, uh, the foam so when you've got things like wrinkles or um, seams it's uh, they do work quite well in that in that job so let's try and push onto the That's a lovely fit. Lovely fit. Just need to replicate that on this side. Oh yes. Fabulous. So now we're 
with a little bit of pressure from the fingernail. Oh, it's fabulous. Marries up beautifully. There we go. Yep. There we go. That is that is lovely. Very happy with that. Right, now to a lot of sanding. Well, not a, not a lot, but enough. We're going to put the fillets into our wing. I'm going to leave that like so. Let's get our wing sheet. And let's get out our Z9 and Z11. Okay, let's do Z9 first. So the idea with these is this adds strength to the the, the lower wing, which is is very thin, being a, a sesquiplane, as as explained earlier. Um, it really needs that sort of reinforcement, otherwise it uh, they they tend to buckle quite easily. So this this is going to go on to um, yeah, that's that side. So the idea being that obviously we can marry up the graphics to a certain extent. Um, it looks like it will uh, do the do. Um, there is a uh, there's there are two scores there and there, and we basically once we we've, we've uh, put the bevel into the uh, the the wing of the fillet, so. Um, we can take out that middle bit because that's where the, uh, the rib sits and then we essentially create two parts that we put into place. Um, so the idea here is that we can remove some of this material behind here and here so that when we stick it to the wing um, it's, uh, it sort of creates a, a flush uh, fit to the uh, to the fillet itself so we've got a nice smooth transition for the air passing over the uh, over the wing um, so this is one of those times where we go to go to the edge take it to the edge and then proceed to shallow bevel our part like so so i will continue doing this obviously we're doing um this edge and these angles too, and the back edge as well. Um, and I'll come back when we're about to split this and uh, and we'll attach it to. So the, uh, the bevel has been put in and we can now pop this into our wing. We just need to take out that scored central part there. go we can fit this onto our wing so, <laughs> so that will go there good hmm not as beveled as I thought I've just got a little bit there that hasn't uh, hasn't quite reduced in width as much as uh, required so just about a quick going over
that'll do. Let's just get some glue on the beveled edges. get any all over my fingers. Just put a little bit on each each end when it comes into contact with the various structures. And then we'll very carefully pop this into place. I don't want to get glue Spread all over the place. Just let that glue dry a bit and then we can press home firmly. Just pop our little bit more of the sand. Get aggressive. <clears throat> Should fit like so, plus put some glue on and make it so. Go, the graphics matched up pretty well there. I'm quite happy with that. That's good. A little bit of glue squidging out, but we can uh, remove that once the uh, once we let it dry a little while. Okay. Well, I'll do the. Uh, the next wing, which requires part uh, Z11, but hopefully the uh, previous wing has um, demonstrated what needs to be one done, one done for the um, for the fillet at least. So I'll I'll uh, crack on with this and I'll get back to you once it's done. So now we have both fillets in place. Um, I've used my little um, tool to uh, to just bring the um, tapered beveled edges to bear upon the uh, the main wing um, which has worked quite well it um, took off some glue as well what I've noticed with with using this um, and with glue beading up is that of course um, if you use your hands, uh, then you find the glue very, very quickly turns a dark colour. Um, obviously, it's picking up dirt on and skin off your uh, off your hands. Um, and uh, you see there, it's uh, a few little darker bits. Um, whereas if you use the uh, the the steel ball, then um, of course it doesn't deposit any of the, any of the uh, muck and grime that you might have over your uh, your hands so um, it's actually quite good for doing that uh, that kind of work really um, 
but um, there we go these wings are still quite flexible but certainly a lot more sturdy now um, with that uh, with that fillet in right the next step is to um, construct the undercarriage so we'll pop this uh, aside for now and uh, uh, grab some plastics <music> main undercarriage part which is uh, P8 I believe let's just extract that from the, uh, from the sheet now to uh, ensure that we have or we use as much of the material as possible and are as uh, not, certainly not wasting as much material um, we've actually placed parts on the inside of the um, the undercarriage struts so when we extract these because we're not going to be using these until later in the build um, we need to put them into a safe place so we don't lose them so i'm going to put them in that little bag that i had the uh, the rudder in it seems to make uh, make sense so it's going to go into and these are parts for the um, the dummy rotary engine, so they're not going to be used until um, much later on in the build. Anyway, so we've got our undercarriage part here. Now these bits fold over like so and like so. So before we do anything, let's just add some glue and stick those down. Um, add the glue on the uh, fold over side because that's um, that's got the cavity in for the both the um, axle and um, the cross member to fit into so to clean that nozzle again so, pop that over Deposit the glue onto the other side and then we'll fold that over um, once the glue is ready for us. Let's just remove some of this mess from the super nose. Just what I do is just rub it off my hands once uh, once I've got it off the the nozzle. Right, carbon fiber. So, uh, a piece of carbon fiber. From this, we need thirty-seven. Two pieces of thirty-seven and two pieces of forty-four. So, I'm guessing that's thirty-seven. Seven. Let's just make sure that's enough for what we need it for. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. So let's cut another one of those. Exactly the same length. So there's two thirty sevens, two forty fours. And another.
so the 44s obviously go on the uh, longer rear facing strut and those are on the forward facing strut let's just complete our fold over there and there and then we shall apply some glue to our carbon fiber and stick it down one so we're putting it relatively centrally on the uh, on the strut maybe a little bit further forward than aft no, let's get it let's get it get easier Off pieces. Hmm. That one seemed to be a little too long. Let's just check the uh, well, uh, yeah, that's more 45 than it is 44. So let's just trim that down. I'm going to use a pair of scissors. So what I can do is just It's fine. So, now let those dry off. Now, stickers. So, we are going to be using S12, so S10, 11, 12, and 13. So, let's extract S10 first. This looks to be a shorter front stay. It's going to go on that there. So it's got a little cutout too at the top there for a, uh, a rigging point. Um, so let's just obtain our tweezers. Let's just get that. Let's just pop it up the front there. Head's getting in the way, okay? Mm. <laughs> Making a bit of a meal of this because I've got to do it at a, a distance that can be seen on camera. Usually I've got my head over. So what I'm trying to achieve is that the sticker um, corresponds exactly to the uh, uh, 
um, to the plastics so that we don't get any overhang. So when we turn it over there, we haven't got any white sticker showing through, which uh, I've managed to successfully do. There we go. Just push the sticker down on the other side. Oops. And then we can move on to what do we reckon? I reckon S. S13, so S10 and S13 pair up on one side. Is that the case? That looks to be the case. So, it's quite. see how it's done. Oh yes, no white sticker showing. So we'll press our sticker firmly down. There we go. Fabulous. Let's continue to the other side. So S12. This is, I guess, this is starboard side. So, starboard side, let's line our little cutout up with our port, rigging port. So, looks good. around the carbon fibre. And the last one, S11. Okay. Put that in place. I'll get the gauge of it on the top of the leg. And wherever it falls, we've got a little bit, a little bit poking out. Let's just readjust. Yep, that looks good. Push that all down into place. Okay, so now we just need to create the cross brace, which is uh, P9, which is this one here. wasn't brilliant. Let's just remove some of those edges and we need it says 64. Let's just double check. 60 well I reckon 65. Get some sticky stuff on that. Down into place across the center of that. It's pretty close. Okay, and let's 
That's not a sticker. That's a sticker. S14. It's a long one. to me. Let's get it straight. How's that look? Not too bad. Right, so what we can do now is fold these. Now they're not actually scored because we want ultimate strength in our uh, in our undercarriage. So we just bend them over, and they should bend at natural point. So there we go. So that's that's what we're looking for, that kind of thing. And then we should be able to slot in our cross brace, which should go into the slots in the end there. Actually they're going quite readily, like so. So what we're going to do is just add a little bit of glue to keep them in place and then the subsequent um, rigging will uh, really help to ensure that um, everything stays in place. go it's all quite flexible at the moment but as i said the the rigging itself should um tighten everything up and of course we've got to uh um glue that onto the underside of our aircraft so that actually goes on like so so what you're looking for here is when you actually attach it that it uh, attaches so that the um, front struts, undercarriage struts, um, the, the base of the leg sits right up at the point where the cowl will be. Like so. So what we can do now is let's add some glue And we can be relatively generous here because, of course, this is very much structural and it's probably going to be the, the one thing that takes a fair amount of abuse. Um, something that you can obviously reattach should it come adrift. But best, best to make it secure. doing now is just transferring the glue over and then I'm going to just pop the front down, lift the back up slightly um, and leave that front glue in situ and then once I'm happy the, uh, the glue is well on its way to setting. We'll put 
push everything home. So um, there have been a few days gone by since uh, since that last uh, section of the video. Um, it's got rather hot here, so you may hear some traffic noises and uh, aircraft noises and all sorts coming in because we've got the doors wide open uh, just to keep everything cool. Don't have anything such as air conditioning here. It's uh, it's good old blighty, so uh, uh, no need for no need for that sort of thing. We'll put up with the heat if we get it. Um, so we were finishing off our undercarriage. So what I have done is I've pressed the um, the plastic down so the glue has taken effect. And now what we need to do is put our sticker or stickers, I should say, um, onto the underside. And these two stickers are. Um, S15 and S16. Um, I don't suppose it matters which uh, which way around you put them on, um, but we'll go S15 first, seeing as it's uh, the lower of the two numbers. Makes sense. Hopefully, when I was designing it, I was trying to make sense as well. We'll soon find out. So this sticker sits over the uh, the right hand side of the um, the undercarriage uh, attachment piece um, and what I'm going to do is using my tweezers I'm gently going to apply this and you can see there are little cutouts for the um, the undercarriage itself the, the undercarriage struts we should be able to just pop it down onto there and obviously it extends backwards from there adding a little more security and also covering up the opening that we got there where uh, where our wing brace is sitting so i can um i can use my magic little tool i could obviously i can use my hands to do this um i can use the um, side of a knife or i can indeed just use my new favorite tool Um, sticker should, if you positioned it, um, should actually fold over so it um, masks the edge of the plastic as well. Gives a little bit of encouragement to, uh, to stick down. There we go. So we'll now put our S16 into place. And that'll have the undercarriage for now completed. I think, having looked at the manual. So the other thing you could do with these is um, is you can wet the back. If you want a little bit of slippage time um, to position it correctly, you could actually just. All I tend to do is just lick the back of the uh, of the stickers. Um, and then they don't instantly stick, but because this is this is a sort of nice open undercarriage, I've got good access to it, um, and the sticker is split into two, it makes the job a little easier. So I'm I'm risking it. So I'm happy there. I'm gonna make sure I hold it in place. And I can start smoothing it down. I've got a little bit of overlap there, so I'm just going to put a little split in the sticker, and then that allows me to fold that portion over against the fuselage. And once again, I've got my fold over piece. It's all making sure it's all stuck down. And the uh, the undercarriage is nice and secure, although it does have a bit of side to side movement that uh, the rigging will uh, take care of. So, 
back to some hard pressure from the steel of the knife. Just making sure everything is stuck down nicely. Excellent. Right. So we're now on to our interplane struts, uh, which are uh, P15 and P16. Um, so those are these these parts here, these little wooden structures with the uh, um, the little. Well, I guess they're probably brass, or that's some sort of um, metal uh, reinforcement banding. Um, obviously, on here it's just a, uh, a digitally created image that's printed onto the plastic. So, anyway, let me get these parts uh, free from the uh, um, free from the sheet and uh, get back to you as soon as that's done. Right, as you can see here, uh, two parts, um, which were P15, P16. I've also got these little P10 parts inside the uh, their structure. Um, so I'm just going to release those. They're not we're going to find a safe place to put our P10s. These are part of the um, uh, the wheel. The wheels, they're the sort of the backing plates on the uh, hub. Being made of the uh, the plastic material, they, um, they provide a, a good sort of uh, um, bearing almost, or rotatory, rotating surface. Um, against the uh, the struts, the uh, undercarriage struts. So I'm going to pop those in a safe place. One of the little baggies um, that came with the kit. So I've already got my P22s in there, which are for the um, the uh, rotary engine. Just pop those in there for safekeeping. And we can turn our attention to the backs of these parts and getting some carbon fibre laid down onto them. Uh, so the the long edges, um, you will need uh, 55 millimetres of your uh, carbon fibre. Let's just uh, measure that out. 15. There we go. Let's just check we're happy. Yep. So let's do another one of those. I'm actually going to do because it goes up at an angle on the strut itself, I'm just going to cut a little angle at the top there. Just lining these up. There we go. There are those two there, and then the back requires the shorter strut requires forty three. Dog is chasing flies around the workshop at the moment. So if you hear any scuffling, you'll know why. He very rarely catches them. So let's just check. That will do. Let's 
let's just cut our second 43 millimeter piece out. There we go. So we'll glue those all into place. But before we do, I'm just going to make sure that the little holes for the rigging down at the bottom are uh, fully opened up. I noticed that they were they were fairly small. I'm just going to pop a bit of wire through. Just to make sure that they're opened up sufficiently firstly obviously for the thread to go through but of course we've also got to get the uh, the threading tool through so. just make sure they're opened up sufficiently okay You can see they're beautifully flexible, very strong for uh, for what they are as well, which is ideal if uh, your landings are not always perfect or your walls are often solid. I'm just putting these down onto the onto the cutting mat so I can forcefully push my wire through. And this is just once again, this is just a an off cut from an old uh, metal push rod control rod. So there we go. The other holes are uh, fine. So let's add our carbon fiber. So once again, as we did with the um, the undercarriage struts, just going to apply glue all the way down the strut. And then just pop that on to the appropriate so the appropriate strut for this as soon as I cut the angle at the top is uh, this one here so I'm making sure that the hole uh, the hole at the top of the strut that's for the rigging just here that's free from being covered over by the carbon fiber and equally down the bottom here where I've just opened up these two holes they're also free from the uh, uh, overlap of carbon fiber like so there we go and then we'll add to this strut that um, shorter piece of carbon fiber Once again, avoiding covering over any holes. There we go, and, get, and obviously, roughly getting the carbon fiber in the in the center of the strut. Um, so now, with these struts, we need to cover the um, the rear side where we've got our carbon fiber with some stickers. Now, on this particular one, we need the I believe it's S twenty five, which is the rear one, and S twenty six, 
which is the uh, which is the front one. So let's let's give that a go. For uh, strut coverings, these are quite uh, quite intricate. We have little cutouts for the um, for the rigging, etc. So this is our S25 going on to, to the the shorter strut. Once again, it's the same technique. Have a good starting point where you know everything should fit. Hold on to it and then using a good eye, using my good eye, just put that down. So I haven't got any particular overlap around the edge, just press everything down into place, a more permanent fixture and all the uh, rigging holes are still um, showing, see there, little rigging holes just down there and the rigging hole at the top is still all there, so that's what we wanted. So. On to S26. See, I'm just using the tip of the knife to drag it out, get that peel on. Then we can once again work our magic. Good use of tweezers. These overlap at the bottom, so don't worry about that. It's actually a little bit closer with my tweezers so I've got greater control. Do you see I've got it facing away from me as well, um, which helps. And I, I can see obviously straight down the sticker, straight down the strut. Just going to check. Um, I was wondering about the overlap up there. I might have a little bit too much. No, I've got. I can see through, so I'm going to. I'm going to call it. Call it good. Just get the sticker pushed down. <coughs> So that's one strut done. The other one is obviously uh, in exactly the opposite uh, way, um, but the same technique. And we use uh, S27 on the short side and S28 on the long side, as it should say in your instruction manual. Um, so I'll get on with that and come back to you once it's done and we'll move on from there. They are done. So the next thing we do is, our um do, 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 our, the cabain struts the kurt cabain struts so that is p12 p13 so um let's just get those out of the sheet mm -hmm. These aren't particularly big or particularly intricate, so hopefully they won't be particularly complicated to put together. In exactly the same way, the fact that we put some carbon fibre on the insides and then put a sticker over them. Um, there is a little bit of folding that goes on as well um, with the the little tab at the bottom here but we'll do that a bit later and the carbon fiber we need oh excuse me yeah keeping me up um is at 17 millimeters so let's measure our 17 millimeters Probably 
that really as I have I really cut 17 millimeters yep let's just have a look have a look see I don't suppose it matters if it isn't no no well that that looks like well it certainly fits so we'd probably go another millimeter if we uh, absolutely needed but I think that'll uh, that'll do the trick that'll do the job so let's just pop that on Need unblocking. There we go. Put that in place. Move it around. Go. So now we need S18 to cover that one. Do this properly with our tweezers again. Takes much of the stress out of it, so I'm just going to marry it up with the bottom flared out part there. And that should smooth out to the rest of the part. There we go. Just make sure it's all stuck down neatly. And then this bottom tab here you can see um, that's actually scored and should quite easily just fold over there to a 90 degree angle which is what we want um, that's folding in um, so that you've got the sticker and the carbon fiber on the back of the uh, the part there so let's just pop that to one side and let everything dry and I will complete the other strut and then we'll come back and pop them onto the uh, fuselage wings. There we go. Then. So I used the uh, S19 sticker on the other Cobain strut. Um, let's bring in our model. Um, and we can now um, pop the struts on. Um, there are some slots in the wing um, that you should see. Um, just there so they've already been pre-cut um, you may need to open it out a little bit um, to uh, to allow these to go through so on the interplane struts the outer facing part is the printed plastic the inner is the sticker and uh, and covering the carbon fiber so at the moment I'm just going to Pop this in place. Without gluing. So the tab on the bottom of this part should go all the way into the wing. And it should come out to sort of the other side there. So what I'm going to do, is it's, it's being a little bit difficult, is I'm just going to run my knife into here just to make sure that there is space for it to go. There we go. That clicks into place. I'm not going to glue it. I'm just going to leave it um, where it is so it is. it can flex back and forth. Um, and what I need to make sure is that the two little holes at the bottom there are still clearly visible so I can get my threading tool through when the time comes. So once again, do exactly the same on the other side. Just going to 
use my knife to make sure the tab on the strut is going to go in. Go. Um, and these two actually go into there are some slots in the the, the second um, bulkhead here that's attached to the first should have some slots um, that have pre-cut into the side you can see just popping the knife in there just to make sure they're clear there and there. And that should allow for these struts to go as far forward as possible into the structure and we want them sitting at the side of the uh, the aircraft right on the on the skin there. Um, that's exactly where they should uh, where they should go. So and we just Make sure they're as far forward as they can go. Um, so it should they should literally be two mil away from the uh, the, the plywood at the front. Um, and we just need to stick them in place. So I'm just going to pop a spot of the old foam to foam. There we go. Just slide that into place. It's far forward, and so it uh, hits the side of. Uh, a bit closer, you can see how it's sitting there. Just do the other side um, and then we'll let these dry out and whilst those are drying out we can uh, start to create or score our um, deck that sits forward of the cockpit I should have freed up that slot like I did the other one. So a bit of glue has got in there. Nope, still doesn't want to go. Let's check out what's going on here. Because all the time we're doing this, the glue is drying we don't want in this situation so I'm actually going to just reapply some glue hopefully that will give us a little more time to locate this part there we go that's better so the position of that mirrors the position of the uh, the one on this side right let's um let's let that dry for now and then we will bring on our scoring guide and our and our z 
16. Now, if you're making one of the older Newports that came out before this video was launched, then the front of this will look slightly different. You'll have a cutout here, um, whereas this has got a slot. Um, so uh, there's a slight difference there, but um, it shouldn't make any difference to the, uh, the build itself. As you can see, this part... sits just there and that slot takes you over the um, the rigging holder parts of the front there you can see so let's get this on to our scoring guide well actually before we do that we could actually um, do our bevels so there are two bevels that run down either side, that's it. Quick and easy to do. And they're not exactly at 45 either, they're uh, a little um, more upright than that. There we go. Put that down on the uh, on the guide with our tape. should do it and then we can start the process so I'm being very careful on score um, especially right at the end here that I don't dig in and go through the material it's not a big deal if you do um, but it just it can show on the other side just a little bit. So you can see I'm just spying the score lines either side, top and bottom. Got to be careful here as well. That's a very delicate part. So when I come to that slot, I'm just going to push down rather than drag the knife any further the last one there we go Release that. And then we carefully want to contour this into the sort of cylindrical shape that is needed to cover over the top of that deck. Missed a couple of scores there. So let's just put one through there, another one through there. That's it. Just make 
sure every one of those creases down like that and obviously it it, it weakens the material if you like from its flat um, rigid structure allowing it to, uh, to to conform to our our curves so there we go and we'll do a quick dry fit I think that's going to work with a little bit of persuasion. What I might do is just looking at this just to make sure that everything's lining up. Um, I might just cut a little bit. There's a there are little cutouts here at the um, the side to accommodate the struts. And I'm just going to take them back a millimeter further because they are right up against those struts when installed in place. So I'll just cut a little bit extra off there. You might not have to with yours. But um, it's just worth checking. It provides for a uh, a good fit. So don't worry too much about having any um, white lines showing here. Um, this is going to be covered over with a sticker anyway. Um, obviously, the, le the less you have, the better. But um, where we want it to really come together is right by the cockpit. Um, there and there, so we'll um, make sure that we get uh, glue on all the surfaces there and bring everything down to bear on, uh, on where it's supposed to be. So let's get some glue onto the surfaces. So all of the surfaces that come into contact with the top deck Clear that out again. Hot weather's obviously not our friend today when it comes to glue. So we're going to add a run of stuff all the way up the edge there. Do some across. I'm not going to bother doing the middle bit. It naturally wraps around there anyway. And then over the surface of the two forward bulkheads or firewalls or whatever you want to call them. Get some more down the side here. And then make sure that we've got contact around the, the cockpit there. So I'm also going to add the glue to our, our part. And then what we're going to do is let that all dry off nicely and then bring it all together um, we're going to move on to just doing the um, the headrest behind the the cockpit itself so let's just we'll move these drying parts off to one side so we don't cause any problems and then we're going to have a look at it would seem it's not on this beveling guide let me just check in the, um, the assembly manual 
I seem to have <laughs> I've missed it off. It should be there. Anyway, we're talking about one, two, three, four, five. Five little uh, uh, creatures we need to put into it. So this is Z7. As you can see, it's a quite a, a delicate little piece. Um, we are going to actually um, bevel it somewhat, though, just around the edges here where it comes into contact with the fuselage. When you look at the uh, pictures of the real aircraft, this this little uh, sort of headrest. Um, I don't know what you call it. It's, uh, it's almost, almost a, a combing or a co yeah, that sort of thing. Um, it's sort of all flush in with the uh, the, the top itself. So um, hence the beveling will help us um, with that um, with that blend. So I'm going to with the, without the use of the, the scoring guide, I'm going to sort of estimate the center there and then just put a score down, right down the middle like so and I'm going to move off to the edge sort of rotating it out from the center point that I've that's at the tip of it there And then we can spend a little bit of time just manipulating this around. And this is also a test to see if I've got graphics right. Because obviously there's an A that sits over it as well. So we shall see. Oh, I think that's quite close. That's quite close. So I'm actually going to use my little favourite tool. I'm just going to smash this down a bit. Squish it down. Just to make it thinner and more malleable. I'm using the small ball for this, but um, you could actually just roll a, roll a paintbrush over it, or a paintbrush handle, say. Oh, we have an interloper, a little money spider. Off we go, sausage. There we go. I want to squish you. So, and then I'm going to I'm going to smoosh this down even more at the front here. So, just basically trying to eliminate the um, the white line that uh, you get. So this literally sits, sort of covers all the way around like so and now we've just got to stick it down in that position easier said than done i hear you shout and uh, yeah absolutely it's a it's a little bit fiddly it's a little bit and it's a little bit fiddly so what i'm going to do is just put some glue where it comes into contact with the headrest. Just put that 
to one side and then just add some onto the headrest itself too. And then I'm going to add some down the edge all the way down to the tip there and back up again. Just going to temporarily pop it in place. Don't worry about getting glue on the surfaces at the moment. The surfaces it's not supposed to be on at the moment. We can always get rid of that at a later date with our little technique with lighter fluid. I just want to make sure that we've got glue in the areas we need it. There we go. And I'm actually going to just note where those glue bars are and just run a little more glue along them. There's a, there is a, a little indicator there that you can use. It should give you an idea. So once again, let all that dry off, and then we can come back and uh, stick that all down once we've got that contact adhesive quality. Right, let's go with our four deck. So I'm just trying to place it centrally so that I can then fold down the sides. I haven't really got that <laughs> particularly centrally. So let's try again. So I shall get my squishing tool again and then go to work on these seams. And as, as I said before, the, the metal ball also tends to lift up any excess glue that's sitting on the surface, which is always a good quality to have. said it doesn't matter too much if you've got a little bit of a white line um, left over there that's something that will be taken care of with the uh, the stickers that we've got to go over these areas which basically mimic stitching that was used to uh, attach these parts together in the real aircraft so. So a little bit of glue on the surface there, which I'm going to just bead up, attempt to bead up using the, the ball. I'm not going to press too hard because obviously it's going, I don't want it to uh, dent the, yeah, dent the foam. Let's lift it off nicely. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fantastic. Excellent. Right. Um, I'm not sure that glue is dry enough to do this, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. So I'm going to start on the, the one side just to make sure that I've got that side stuck down. this over the top I'm just putting a bit of weight onto the headrest itself just to make sure that the material wraps all the way around and comes right to the, uh, the front of the, the headrest so we get less likelihood of the um, white bits showing and then just use the tools I have available to me to manipulate this part into some sort of position I've gone very quiet. <laughs> the uh, this time of year, I get a bit dozy because of the uh, because of the hay fever. There we go. The A is not too bad. Could be slightly better. Um, I might adjust the uh, the graphic before we send this particular kit out, just to bring that A in um, slightly at the uh, at the top there. Um, but uh, it's good enough. It's good enough for now, just to demonstrate this, and I'll be happy to fly this around with it like that. So here we go. So we've got two of the parts that we needed on in place. Um, just you can do you can finesse um, to your heart's content on uh, on this one. Um, just pushing everything down into place. But, um, sooner or later, you're just going to have to go right. On to the next step, which is page 23. Oh, yes, we have got the other strut, do, do, which actually doesn't need any carbon fibre, but it does need a little bit of uh, folding and gluing. So the main structure is P14, this part here. We'll carefully remove that. And this has got a few scores in. It's got the windscreen of the aircraft integrated into it. And it forms a, a triangle. So the two scores, or that you've got four scores, you've got to score down these two grey parts here, and then between the grey part and the windshield, you've got scores as well. So you can you can basically do that and that. You'll notice that it um, pinches the part at the top here, which actually forms a little. Uh, tab that inserts into the um, a little plate that sits on top here that then then hits the wing 
on the uh, on the top wing on the underside so those those fold over like that but before we do that we are going to double over the struts like so and in fact i think that's that's not going to stick down too well because the um the the score is quite resistant so what i'm going to do i'm just going to fold that back out again and just increase the score in this part by carefully running down the existing score obviously you don't want to deviate from that or just cause you problems so that score folds over more readily now so i'm going to do the same on the other side trying not to do is go all the way through it but uh, obviously if I do I can just um, just take the piece and stick it stick it on the other side but um, I much prefer to do it the other way now before we actually fold these round um, there is a sticker that I can put on the other side um, rather than having that as a, as a sort of a white exposed part I want to make it look as scale as possible so we can just pop this representation of the windshield on the other side into the fairly obvious area that it should sit like so. nearly nearly <laughs> Good. So, right, let's get gluing. So those foldovers, we just need to run some glue into, into them like so. And then we're just going to let that dry and then fold over once, um, once the glue's dry and is uh, contact adhesive. Th these little tabs on the bottom, by the way, um, they actually poke into holes pre-cut um, here and here in the, um, the internal two mil structure. So you just wanna make sure that those holes are still available just by popping your scalpel in just to make sure they're still open there we go and the yeah the triangular part is going to sit just there um the other bit that sits on top is a very small part to do uh, p17 this little piece here now I'm going to leave that in there until I've got the whole structure on. Um, otherwise, I'm going to lose this. So uh, we'll uh, we'll keep that on the sprue for now on the sheet. Um, and once our glue is dry, we'll come and put it all back together again. Aha! We have it. Okay, let's do our foldy over bit. So first, we fold over the struts on themselves and then we fold the struts over like so and we get this little pinch top here um what i'm going to do if i can i'll find my um pliers so i'm just going to push those two parts together you'll notice at the top um there are also hole there's a hole for rigging as well 
So we want to make sure we keep that as clear as possible. I'm just pressing the, the top together just to make sure that uh, um, it's shaped correctly. So now we've got these, as I mentioned earlier, we've got these little tongues here. I'm going to bend those inwards like so. And those are going to go into those little slots in the uh, in the fuselage itself. So So how we position this is that the the back of this part, the one that is the uh, the plastic rather than the sticker, faces rearwards, and the bit with the sticker on is facing forwards. So it should go on like so. So those, as I said, those little tongues should pop into those slots either side like so then our heart should sit there when I will we'll actually glue it into place and in fact I don't think this side's gone in particularly well so I'll just extricate that and take that side out and then give that give that another go. I don't think that's going in properly so get the knife in there just to free stuff up. Well, a knife will go in there, but our little tab isn't going to go in there. Just going to add some glue to it. That might actually help as a as a lubricant to pop this in. Yeah, that works. Excellent. So now I'll just put some glue this side and we can secure this piece in place just in front of the cockpit. And easy. So we have our struts in place. I'm actually going to leave that little plate off until we put the top wing on. Um, I'm going to keep it open so that we can use the, the holes to thread our, uh, our rigging through. So let's just... Um, add our little stickers onto the sides now. So we've got uh, the S, S20, 21, 22 and 23. So the S20 is one of the long ones. And that goes on to 
the starboard side. Get it? No, it's, it's on the port side. So that should sit between the two struts, like so. And cover over the seam. As I said, it oh, there we go. See, I'm not knocked the strut out. So, as I said, it sits between two seams. I will add it down. Okay, make sure you keep the hole here clear. Um, that is um, that is just a hole for a decorative piece to come down into. It's the what would have been the aileron um, control arm. Um, but obviously on this pole, we're yeah, rudder and elevator. So, okay, let's get our uh, S22 part. And pop that on the other side. So, I'm just using the knife to uh, pop it underneath that, uh, that interplane strut there. And then the shorter ones go behind the second strut um, around the uh, around the cockpit. So we've got S23. Can go on this side. Position that slightly lower to match up with the forward sticker. And just complete the look with S21 and on the port side. Fantastic. Right, what's next? It's the top wing next, so temporarily we can move this to one side and we can grab our top wing parts, namely the top wing and a few of our ribs. So, so let's free our top wing with these lovely rural flying core roundels. Or any other roundels you might not be making this particular aircraft but you might be making a new port so here we go we have our uh, 
our main wing here, you'll notice on the inside we have score um, that deviates from the straight slightly, as does the wing, which is slightly swept. What we want to do is just gently create fold across the wing like so. It's not um, it's not too cranked, but as you can see, it's um, it's enough to create a sort of almost an, an under camber to the uh, to the wing itself. So which uh, which hopefully generates a little bit more lift. Just noticed a little bit of excess. There. Let's just remove that. So to keep it like that, we need to put a, a few ribs in place as well. So. Uh, we will need, and I think we've got a double set of these, so you only need one of each of these. So you've got a, a D18, yeah. which do the job here, but we've got two of them in this little pack. And then D17, which do the job here. Uh, slightly shorter and you notice on the wings themselves you've got indicators as to where these ribs go so you've got little stripes um, in place uh, for on this particular wing now these um, particular ribs have a score down the center the idea is that you use that score to um, divide them into two So we'll do those ones later. We'll just put that to one side. And these also get decorated with some stickers. Where have I put my sticker pack? Here it is. Right, so S31, S32 are the stickers in question. And what we want to do is place the flat side of our rib down the center of the sticker, like so. And then draw the sticker up around the sides of the rib so it's sort of enclosed on three sides like so and I reckon that's going to go there because of the way that the graphic is angled on there that should uh, encompass the round like so and so hopefully the S32 that I'm picking off now will serve exactly the same purpose on uh, on our other wing. So another way of doing this is actually if you've got a, a, a map like mine, use the graphics on the mat to indicate where your center line is and then pop your rib down onto that center line. <laughs> it's uh, it there's always a technique. This is this is a new one on me, so maybe not uh, particularly good at it at the moment. There we go. That'll do. So let's pop our ribs into place. 
we just need to put a little bit of glue on the exposed edge. Like so. Pop that down in the area indicated. So it's important you get it in this particular area, but also there's you'll notice on the uh, the cutout there's a slot here as well. Um, so just make sure that, that sits that slot, and there's one up here too, sits on the outside of the rib, almost flush to the uh, the wall of that um, of that rib. The rib doesn't bond straight away just uh, leave it for the glue to dry um, in position and then uh, shape it once the uh, once the glue has uh, reached its contact adhesive ness Okay. So we're lining up with those holes, trying to line up the graphic as well. There we go. Excellent. Right, let's concentrate on these centre pieces, centre ribs. I'm going to cut these down the middle too. And do with them exactly the same treatment with S29 and S30 stickers. That's these two here. Now these have a little portion of wrap around at the back the back is elevated and exposed so that will help hide the, uh, the white the foam there we go. we're going to with this particular sticker because of the wraparound we're going to bring the wraparound side up first So, then wrap that little tab around like that, and then bring the other side up so that that's nicely covered at the back now with the coloration of the sticker rather than just an exposed um, white piece of foam. So we'll just repeat that process for S29. So once again, fold up on the one side, keeping the other side down, wrap the tab around, and then fold up the other side so that that tab is encased and the whole part is covered apart from the one edge with the sticker. So let's see how our uh, ribs are doing here. Let's make sure that they're pressed down now that the glue should have set. 
making sure we can still see those slots and that just helps retain that crank in the uh, in the wing so let's do the same with our little inner tabs And once again, you've got a slot here. Make sure it stays on the outside of the rib, but it's exposed and pretty much flush with the wall of the rib itself. Ditto for the other side. Okay, we'll just let the glue dry on those and then push the uh, push the parts home once the glue is dry. Um, and let's see what we've got to do next. Oh, excuse me. Right, there's a little bit of underwing furniture, uh, namely the gun sight um, that uh, we need to put in place um, once we've got those ribs in place too and that part is P19 and it's a, uh, a fold over and stick part but there is there is a little bit of an anomaly with this fold over and stick because it's got four legs two of which stick together creating one leg and two which remain separate and form with the other leg a kind of tripod arrangement So here we go, this is our little sight and it folds over like so, but two of these little legs here stick together and two stay separate and we've got to work out which ones. One set is longer than the other, so let's just consult the manual to see. So it's the longer ones that stay separate and the short ones that go together. So let's apply glue accordingly. So we don't need any glue on the long, the long prongs. They stay separate. But we will take some glue onto the short one. Right, we're just going to let that fall apart, glue dry, and let's just push our ribs into place. Now that the glue should be dry. It looks like we're going to have to leave it a bit longer. Maybe not. 
Maybe we're good. If we leave it a little while, see how it goes. Okay. Let's bring our gun sight together. Two shorter ones stay together. These two longer ones fold apart. It create a, a V, as I said, sort of a tripod between the the three prongs themselves. And this attaches to the wing with the short single prong now going into the forward slot, which is just here, as you can see, just there. And then the two other prongs go to the sides here and here, where there are slots already cut out. So let's just dry fit this, just to make sure we know what we're doing. And then it all fits. So it goes in there, and these two pop there and there. Mm -hmm. One's a bit springy, but once the glue's in place, it'll stay. So let's just add a little dab of glue to each of the ends on here. Like so. everything in place, let it dry, and hey presto, we now have a gun sight. Right, last, last chance to get these ribs pressed down, I think everything else is looking fine, that rib has moved across somewhat where it should be, so let's just give it a bit of a squidge over. And this one has, <laughs> has actually gone over the hole, so I obviously wasn't being too observant when I was doing that. Still. Managed to move them around so that that's not an issue. Excellent. So we can pop the top wing to one side for now because we're bringing back the fuselage to start the process of rigging. going to start off with the rigging that we already have in place. Um, in the assembly guide, this is side A, this is side B. What we'll do now is unravel side A carefully so we don't get any knots. Just smoothing it out so we get some of those kinks out from it being coiled up for so long.
And so the first place that this bit of rigging goes to is the top rear of our interplane strut. So let me just grab Grab it through. There we go. And then that goes back through the top of the strut, the forward facing one. So the line actually skirmishes along the, the top of the strut. In and through. And then this heads on down through the top leg of the undercarriage. So that that part there, you can see it's gone through from there to there. Now it's going to go down to that leg. So I need to just push the, the rigging tool up through that hole. Pop my rigging through. So there we go, just untangle it from other struts. And then that goes through finally the there's a small hole down the bottom of the undercarriage just here. Not the I'm going to focus on that. So just down the bottom here, it's forward of the um, the axle hole. I'll pop my rigging tool through. Hopefully that'll that'll demonstrate exactly where it is. It's just there. So that literally for that piece is its final hole. So just make sure you leave enough slack in the system. that away and then we're going to repeat process on the other side so I won't subject you to that and I'll come back when we are uh, doing our second stage of rigging so I've got the rest of our rigging here let's take how much does it say mm -hmm. Doesn't say just the rest of it, I guess. So, um, the second strand of rigging that we're using starts and finishes on our little um, points at the nose there. And it goes through both wings, so it needs to. I reckon that'll be enough. Let's see what's that. That's about that's about a metre. That should do. So this is a little more fun to do. Um, 
just because the holes are a little uh, more, well, not inaccessible, but you know what I mean. So, um, we're going to start on the port side of the aircraft. You see, this is the right side for me. And we need to get our rigging tool through the hole here. The only trouble is, is obviously the hole is so low to the fuselage that when you actually go into it, it wants to, on the other side, go through the foam. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a an uptick on the end of my tool, my rigging tool, so that when I push it through, hopefully, if I tilt it upwards, it comes right through without uh, going through the foam. As you can see there. So let's take a little bit of rigging through that hole. There we go. And then what I want to do on the other side is a stopper knot just here. So right at the end. In fact, I think because the that hole is so tight, I'm just going to put a, just a, a normal standard straight up and over and through um, knot. I don't think we'll need any more to hold it. And of course, that kind of knot's a little bit smaller, um, so it shows up less as well. So I've tied the knot like so. And now I'm going to straight away just get rid of that tail. So we've got a knot sitting there. So the next phase is to go up through the forward cabane strut. should be pretty straightforward. So I'm going from the outside in to pull it through. Okay. And then what you've got to remember is um, the way in which the stuff we're rigging interacts with the stuff that we've already rigged. So um, what I don't want to do is put this forward of our existing rigging because it will distort that rigging and pull it in the wrong direction. This will actually go on the inside of this first piece of rigging that we did earlier um, down to the hole in our strut. Now, I can actually cheat and just pull the strut out, push my rigging tool through the forward hole of the two that are there, make sure this goes on the inside of that first rigging strand. And then just pull that through, like so. I can check that goes on the inside, and yes, it does. Now I'm going to loop this back through that second hole in the lower strut, so going from the inside of the strut outwards. So 
Now, when I pull this through, I'm actually going to leave a loop of the rigging wire sitting outside of this junction, basically because this this is what I I term a locking junction for the for the rigging. So when it's pulled tight, it's very difficult to get any back or forth. So I'm actually going to leave, as you can see here, there's a loop of rigging um, that I'm not going to tighten up until it comes to tightening up the rigging. So let's just pop that back in there. And then this goes up to our triangular um, cabain strut and it goes on the inside of the existing rear rigging so we need to make sure that that goes up and through like so so now we can pull this rigging up and through top of the triangle so we just need to push through the double rigging hole at the top this is where my uh, my little bend needs to be straightened out And then we come down from here and do it, do the process in reverse on the other side. So we don't have to actually put a another rigging thread into the equation. It can all be done with this final thread. I'm starting to fray at the end, so a little bit of spit helps there. Right, pull that through. go and this comes down make sure it goes on the inside of the existing rigging and once again I can take my strut out go through the rearmost hole and pull the rigging through Then loop that back through to the forward hole. Once again, keeping an excess of material this side of the strut before we do the final tightening up the rigging once the top wing is on. Just pop that back there, put a little more through, and then this last line goes up through to our forward cabane, make sure it goes on the inside of the existing rigging. So, then And back down 
so I need to put my little bend in again. my green tool There we have it. So that's all ready now to be tightened. It always looks a bit of a mess at the moment. But um, yeah, once it's all tightened up, it'll look absolutely stunning. So our next process is to get the top wing onto um, this structure. And it is literally just a process you'll see on top of each of the um, struts, you have a little tongue or protrusion. And that should correspond to the various slots in the wing itself. So the process really is to start popping everything on. Just take that rigging, excess rigging wire through underneath the other rigging just to get it out of the way. So we can do a bit of a dry run test, um, but you normally do this in stages anyway. So we would probably secure the center first. That all seems to sit where it should do. The only thing we've got to do, which I've just remembered, is our little plastic part, our little plastic plate that sits on top here. Um, P17. Let's just cut that out. And pop that on there and I'm just going to I'm going to secure it with a bit of foam foam now that might stop restrict thought I added my fingers then I did not um, it might restrict the movement initially but um, if I use it sparingly once the rigging starts moving um, it should be it should be absolutely fine so Let's just see if we can pop this on without the need for any glue. This will act as a little shield, if you like. There we go. No, actually, I don't, I don't think it actually needs glue. Once it's pushed through, it actually sort of because it's pushing back on a smaller hole than the hole of the structure that's up through it, it should stay where it is. So, okay, we won't glue it, we'll keep it like that. Um, and then we will look to glue the centre section in place. So we're going to put glue on the inside, the unprinted side of our tabs at the top of our cabane struts. And then I'm just a little on the on the plate there. So we, yeah, as I say, we've got glue on the insides there and there, and on the plate. And once we bring the wing up to bear on these, then don't worry too much about the. Um, the interplane struts at the moment. Just concentrate on getting those forward struts in place. They should 
readily go up into the little slots there and then at the back a little interplane strap there should slot in like so We can check looking from above we can check how straight the wing is um, compared to the bottom and I would say that's looking pretty good at the moment now what we're going to do just leave that central central section to Set, set the glue to set. Make sure it's all pushed down, all staying where it should do. And make sure that all comes together. And then, once the glue is set, we will set about securing our interplane struts into place as well. So uh, let's not forget that the lower portion of these struts aren't secure at the moment. So I think it would probably be wise just to uh, put a dab of glue on the uh, on the little pads at the bottom, little tabs. So I'm just going to pop the glue on the unprinted side we'll try and avoid getting any on the um, the rigging itself and we'll just pop that into place so I've so just slotted that in as normal I'm going to do the same on the other side. Extract, splodge, accurate splodge. Reinstall. So yeah. And then I'm going to tackle each side separately so I can concentrate. So they should pop up, those little tabs on top should pop up into the little slots in the wing. Just add, because it's easier to see I'll just add the glue to the the rib rather than top of the structure the um, strut structure too generic let's pop that into place there we go that's slotted in let's make sure that the Two parts are sitting well together. So we check alignment, still looking good. One tab's moved out slightly. So just pop that down. Once again, let it dry out and then we'll move on to the next one. So, with the glue dry, as I said, we can move on to the next strut. Add a little bit of glue. Need to clean that nozzle again. Into place. 
Nice. Not going in. Okay, if they're not going in, let's make sure those slots are available. There we go. That's it. In place. So that's all looking pretty good now. Oh, there's a little issue here with one of the stickers going with the rigging rather than staying on the on the rib. Well, everything, I'm just going around and checking, making sure that everything is in place. So those tabs need to be fully inserted into the wing and back and front. Um, that determines the angle of attack to some extent, um, which is obviously very important. So once again, we'll let everything dry out and then we can tighten up the rigging Tightening up the rigging. Well, let's clear the decks of most of the flotsam and jetsam. And first thing we can do um, is just with our tweezers and our fingers, we can start pulling stuff together. So if you remember, our initial rigging started at these points here that we installed very early on in the build. So everything needs to be pulled from there initially. So the first part is to just put some tension in that rear wire there that runs from the original hole up to the top of the um, outer interplane strut. And then tension between the tops of the interplane strut, uh, front to back, and then that comes down to the undercarriage, and we can tighten up. And you can notice that if I tighten too much, I pull the wing down. So we don't want to go crazy. Fortunately, the hole down in the uh, undercarriage is relatively tight it does it does does give up now and again but uh, at least we can pull things through so and then we'll do exactly the same on the other side I'm just trying to pull through that first strand that we installed to there and then on the undercarriage so I think we pulled a little bit too much <laughs> see there's a bit of a droop on the uh, the top wing there so we're going to slacken off a little. And I think it's probably that uh, rearmost. There we go, the rearmost um, 
bit of rigging that's we've pulled too tight. We'll give it some slack. And then that wing should once again pop up and flatten out, as you can see. So let's just give that another go. So we're just gently going to pull things through. So they're not super tight, but they've just had the slack taken out of them. So we're then going to concentrate on the second strand that uh, we installed. Just pulling that through. So I'm pulling the little loop that we allowed at the end there. I'm pulling that nice and tight so that that is exactly where we need it. I'm then going to pull that loop right through so that we have nothing sticking out on that return. So that really now, that that bit of rigging there is locked in place. So now we're going to pull from the rear through the triangular strut, which once again is a bit of a locking mechanism for the, uh, the whole process. So if we bring it through so that this rear um, rigging is just tight then that's good and then we can repeat the process in reverse on the other side and tighten up on that loop hope you can see that pulling through So that's now nice and tight from the top of our triangle down to the bottom of our interplane strut. We can now pull that loop out and lock that rigging in place. And then we can pull our excess through to the top of our forward cabane strut. And then with our tail, here, we can now pull everything tight. Like so. So nothing's overly tight now. The wing is nice and flat. Got a little bit of uh, dihedral in the lower wings. And now we can concentrate once again on that other set of rigging that was installed initially. So then the important part for the undercarriage is that the tension is even so that the undercarriage sits um, centrally. Just try to gather the two parts, there we go, together. I'm probably going to just knock them together as well. There we go. 
that's just temporary. And then what I can actually do to keep the tension, I'll use the weight of the aircraft, and I'm going to hang that. Um, and I'm just going to add a couple of drops of CA glue, foam safe CA, to the points on the undercarriage where the, uh, the rigging comes through. Because now the, um, the rigging on the rest of the aircraft is nice and tensioned. Um, I can uh, I can keep everything nice and neat, like so. Everything seems to be very symmetrical, um, and uh, I'll let that set overnight um, so that I know it's very well glued. So um, that's I can't show you that unfortunately because I'm going to have to move this to a different area to do that. But literally, just going to put dabs of glue on the parts of the. Uh, undercarriage there and there um, that have the rigging coming through and that'll be uh, a couple of dabs of um, CA, foam safe CA. Um, you could use aliphatic as well which is another glue that we do um, that um, that works very well for this uh, for this purpose. So let's do that and I'll come back and show you the results. So I've had this hanging up by a thread um, for uh, uh, well over 24 hours now um, it doesn't have to be for that long um, it's just I happened, happened to be away um, uh, over the bank holiday weekend um, so anyway these are now nicely glued here I've also added some glue at the uh, the rigging points at the top of the um, uh, struts too for the undercarriage and um, you can actually add um, extra glue if you want at various different points um, I'm going to leave it for now um, the only thing that I haven't done is I haven't secured our sort of second string that we put on um, at the forward point um, on the fuselage just there so um, what I'm actually going to do uh, is uh, because it just at the moment's just going through that uh, that hole and and then we've got a nice long tail out back I'm going to grab that tail and I'm going to just put a small um, knot in place um, whilst we're here so I'm just going to loop this I could actually cut some some of that off I don't need all of that so I'll just cut that off for now make it easier for myself um, I'm just going to loop that around the back of the rigging just pull it through like so I'll just add a, a knot to there for security um, and then add a little bit of uh, a little bit of glue to that um, that spot there, so I'm going to use my uh, foam safe CA. Just a little little splodge there. And um, the other point you can actually um, add some is just uh, between these two points here on the rigging where they meet, um, and that adds a, a sort of a level of, of rigidity and it tends to soak into the uh, to the rigging wire which is uh, which is good so um, we'll just um, allow that to uh, soak in and set there um, and the other thing that I'm going to do whilst I'm here is I'm going to tie knots at the at these points too so I'm going to cut the uh, the central knot that we created to allow it to be hung up and I just cut that off and then just once again loop these round Jesus, like so it's a little bit of uh, stiffness in the wire because of the the glue that's soaked into it, so I'm just going to pull that. That's it. I'll just add a. I'm going to add a second one as well. So this is, I think, commonly known as a a hitch. So 
So we're doing two hitches. Okay, I think I'll secure that just there. And do the same on the other side. Something around behind. Pull through. Second hitch. So, so before we cut the tails off, um, these uh, this, the straggling bits off. Um, once again, I'm just going to add a little more glue to those knots, just to uh, to properly secure them in place. Okay. So. We'll let all of those points dry off, uh, pop that to one side, and we can start on the next phase of the build, um, which is the motor mount. Our motor mount is mainly made up of plywood, um, but we've also got a little magnet to put in place uh, to... Uh, um, cover that magnet over, we also need to use one of our little um, circular stickers, S24, um, on there. So, as per the instructions, we will release um, W3 and also uh, w, the two W4 parts as well. Um, this should be a fairly straightforward process. We've already taken out W1 there. She comes. The tabs running along the grains come out a lot easier than the tabs running across the grain. Actually, that wasn't too bad at all. So it's only um, 0.4 millimeter go. So I'll pop that to one side for now. And so it doesn't matter which way around the uh, the W fours go, but make sure when you're gluing it together that it actually says W three on the top of the mount as we're looking at it at the moment. So these should neatly slot in to the slots provided on the side of W three. Push that home firmly, like so, and then, and I'm happy that they are fully inserted, I'm just going to run a little bit of the CA, now you can use CA or Alifata gear, um, both work equally as well. So, and what I'm going to do rather than use excessive glue. So I'm just going to use a, uh, a little bit of wire and just make sure that the glue is running whilst it's still wet. It's running all the way along the joins. Like so, there we go. So that's part one done. A little bit sticky there. So the second phase um, is to create the um, the first uh, firewall, which consists of um, W2, the three W5s, Go. 
and two of these W6s. Now we've got four here, two are spares, should we break any, um, either in the assembly process or um, during use, we can always get re replace them. So that's pretty much our, um, our plywood used up. So with the um, W2 showing, that's our forward face, and we need to, um, firstly, these these little hook parts, our W6 uh, parts, I believe. Um, let's check. Yeah, W6. These little parts here um, act as the hooks that go in and secure the, uh, the, the um, cowl to the front of the aircraft. And they go in... Uh, make sure you follow the instructions. So we've got our W2 facing forward, and these hooks obviously want to be on the back of this part. So they insert this way, and on this particular side, which is the aircraft's port side, you want the hook facing upwards. So you can see where the hook is like that, and that's going to go in. And that should slide in and sit like so within that part there and on the other side because these hooks are exactly the same so it doesn't matter which side we use we want the hook to be facing downwards like so so that goes in and it's the outer hole once again that sits in and that should slot in like so now we can secure these in place with a little CA while they're sitting there. So these are fairly important structurally and to the function of taking the cowl on and off because to actually um, place the battery within the aircraft um, you need to remove the cowl so these are being put under pressure every time you uh, you slip the cowl on and off now the little trick that I'd like to show you here or well, not a trick a recommendation really um, is that obviously they're, 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 they're made of plywood, so they can be relatively delicate. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my CA just to cover the entirety of the part on the back side, just with a very light coating on the edge as well. And the idea is that the glue will soak into the grain, and actually make it a much more resilient structure. Now I don't want great um, gobs of this glue, so I'm just sort of gently adding a little to the uh, to the whole structure. Um, the reason I don't want it to, uh, I don't want great large lumps of glue all over is that of course it will impede the, uh, the attachment process. I'm also going to use my little wire stick here just to make sure that the glue is spread out and not bunching up anywhere. get quite a lot on that side so I'll just spread it around it doesn't matter if it goes on to the uh, exterior of the plywood it'll soak in and it'll harden up the whole the whole structure there we go so we can do the same with our little uh, well, these are these these lugs here are 
uh, for the cowl, the actual plastic vac form cowl to sit on um, once it's installed, um, almost as a sort of a, a support and guide as to where it's but where they're supposed to go. So you can see they actually sit. Once again, we've got the the front of the um, the, the W2 part here with our hooks installed um, left and right, port and starboard, and this is where our little bring that up there. This is where the uh, little uh, cowl supports sit. They should slot in, and the top should be flush with the outer edge of the uh, W two part, like so. So once again, we can pop all of these in place. So you've got a little bit of. Uh, Access on the back there, which I can get rid of. Just with the other one too. Okay, and then we'll get these in place. And make sure they are sitting flush with the edge. Uh, of the W2 part. There we go. And then what we can do is just add a little glue um, to make sure that they stay in place. letting capillary action um, wick the glue into place. Just make sure they are installed so they're perpendicular to the, um, the plate. So there we go, and conveniently, I can just pop them onto the top of my uh, bottle and pop that to one side to uh, to dry off. Um, and I'll pop this to one side to dry off as well. And once everything is uh, set, we'll come back and put it all together. So sure. here are our two parts now that we can marry up. And uh, obviously, if you look at them carefully, you've got four slots here, and you've got four tabs here, and they should all pop into place. There we go, one side, other side. Good, okay. So make sure they're pressed home firmly because the angle at which this sits um, relative to that front plate um, determines the down thrust of the, the motor and it, the position that it sits here determines the side thrust of the uh, you can see, probably see there that the, the motor's going off at a, a slight angle there. So just make sure everything is pushed down where it should be. And then we can get our glue and secure everything into place. So we're just going to use that little wire again to 
make sure that the joint is completely covered. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about any excess glue that you've got lying around. It's, uh, it's all going to do a good job. There we go. Now while that's drying off, we can actually install our little neodymium magnet, neodymium magnet. Um, but what we need to do before we place it in here, now the, the, the way that it's going to come into contact with the, uh, the magnet that's already installed in the aircraft is that this part is going to go on like that and twist up. So it's this face here um, that will be coming into contact with the magnet here. And now, as you will all know, the magnets have a, um, a polar polarization, so it can only go one way. So if I just pop the magnet onto the existing one that we've installed in our W1 uh, part there, then we now know that that's the way that the magnets hold together. The other way around, obviously, they uh, they push apart, so we don't want that. Um, so that's the way that we want the, um, the the magnet to go into our um, our cowl part, our motor mount. So what I'm going to do is carefully remove it by sliding a knife between the magnet and the sticker. And then I have with the orientation like that, I can then install it into the hole in should be it should be a press fit. So there we go. So that's in there. It's flush with the back. Of, uh, of the motor mount part there. So what I'm going to do is just add a little glue on the other side um, to ensure it stays in place. Okay. And also I'm going to add the sticker to the other side, which I'm just going to pop out that while the glue dries. I'll just grab this sticker and pop it on quickly. So another S24. Just be a bit OCD about it and get the, the, the number the right way up. I'll put it back as one jot. But, uh, and then I'm just going to use the back of the knife, which obviously pulls the magnet forward if uh, it needs it just to make sure that everything's flattened down and good to go right we'll let that dry off and then we can move to the next stage from our two millimeter sheet we need two of these d19s Good. And we also need, so I'd actually, I'd stupidly thrown this away um, because I thought I'd used all the bits on it, but obviously I hadn't. Fortunately, I haven't creased my Z20 parts, so let's just get those out of the scrap that's left of this. So this is on the um, uh, the wing parts, one millimeter foam sheet. Okay, and then I can actually throw that away now. Um, right, I've also got P21. Just 
number three. And also uh, P23 as well. The P23 parts represent the um, exhaust outlets for each of the cylinders. So let's start the process of putting this all together. We've got some stickers that we need to apply as well. But... Um, Oh, the other part we do need, of course, is our little brass tube. Is in here somewhere? We'll get get that out because we'll need the uh, the black straw as well. Okay, of course, we've got some other parts here that we've saved. We need the P twenty twos. We'll grab those while we're. We've got our fingers in the bag. Okay. So, what we can do is just pop P21 onto our uh, brass tube. And then what we want to do is apply or attach D19 to each side of that uh, that plastic part. Just doing a dry run here, as uh, so that the foam, little foam fingers, go down the centre of each of the cylinder protrusions on the uh, on the plastic part, like so, and uh, uh, same on the the back as well. So. Let's just pull all that apart for now. You see, easier said than done. So if we take the tube out, that's it done quickly. And then we'll start applying some of our glue. It's not going to happen, is it? Again, there we go. So we're just going to put a little glue up each of the protruding fingers, like so. Then we just put that brass tube through the center, and then I'll apply. Plastic part. And then apply some more glue. And then pop that on the assembled structure. Go. Now to each side of this structure we can now assemble the little parts that, uh, the Z20 parts that I almost threw away. So they should line up with the 
um, the sides of the center parts of our two millimeter foam. Let's repeat the process. So, well, it's good to know which is back and which is front. Now, obviously, the front of the um, the part is where we can actually see the graphics that are printed onto the foam. So that's the forward-facing part of the uh, of the engine. It's pretty restricted when, when obviously it's all assembled. The only parts you can really see are the, uh, the the front of the of the motor itself when it's installed. So uh, that's why all the graphics are pointing forward, so that um, that's what we visually see when it's installed on the uh, on the aircraft. Right, sticker time. So we've got these little. Um, almost castellated stickers S36 and S35 um, they are a sort of a repeating pattern um, the 35 is slightly larger than the, the 36 these are edging stickers and they are designed so that they go around the edge of the foam that we've just installed so this sort of hexagonal arrangement here um, and what we need to do now is, if I can just grab this sticker with a pair of tweezers. The sort of little castellated areas protrude into the spaces between the cylinders, essentially. So... It's a little bit fiddly, um, but as long as you get that edge down, like so, move on to the next one. And it's just a process of going around that edge, adding that thin strip of material um, so that that white edge is covered up. So let me continue with that process. You can use, um, to flatten things down, you can use the side of the knife or the, the back of the knife to sort of push everything into place, even use the, the blade itself just to sort of tuck everything down onto the uh, surfaces and just keep moving around, covering up that white edge. So. so once you've done the the longer um, S35, um, the rest of the circumference um, you can do with the S36 part. And once you've completed all the way around, you switch over and you can do the other side as well. So I've got my little silver edging on there. So our next phase is to actually put the, or start assembling um, the uh, cylinders. And this is a process, uh, quite a repetitive process, a 
nine cylinder repetitive process um, of creating them from this supplied straw and these S34 stickers. So before we start, what you need to do is just make sure that um, the top of your straw is nice and uh, level. Um, if not, then obviously take a little knife to it and cut a little bit off. Doesn't matter if it squishes down and just make sure that you've got a fairly level top to your uh, to your straw now these s34 stickers are relatively delicate um, you've got the sort of main body this rectangle that wraps around the straw and you've got a, a sort of protrusion a cylindrical protrusion at the top that goes that that forms the top of the cylinder, um, but it's got quite a narrow connection to the um, the rectangle. So I'm going to start at the uh, bottom right corner of this uh, of this particular part and just free it up from the backing, and then I'm going to use my tweezers on the the freed edge, oh, which has gone back down again. Like that. and then just carefully peel off the the bottom half and then put my tweezers in the center of the part and then peel up and give it a little wheel and that should bring everything clear of the uh, of the backing material so what i'm going to do now is I'll just release the uh, the tweezers there. Um, is I want to place the straw bang in the middle of my rectangle. Put a bit of fold over there. It's just bring that out. So I want to put this bang in the middle of my part with the. Um, bang in the middle of the sticker with the top of the straw just coming to meet the join between the rectangle and the circle like so and also what I want is for the rectangle to be pretty much perpendicular I mean at 90 degrees to the direction of the straw like so. So if I bring that up to the camera, hopefully that will uh, give you an idea of what you're aiming for. It's refocused. So that's what you're aiming for. And then our first move is to fold that circle down over the top of the straw like so so you're getting that effect there and the second step is to draw these little tabs on the cylinder down I'm just so I don't get my fingers stuck on the uh, sticker that's, that's protruding I'll just use the back of the knife Bring all those stickers down and then I'm going to wrap one edge round making sure that the top of the sticker stays level with the top of the cylinder as I go around and then stick that down and then just repeat the process with the other side making sure and then the stickers should overlap and there you have one cylinder so what I'm going to do now is remove that particular cylinder from the straw and I'm going to use the bottom edge of the sticker as the guide to cut it from the uh, from the straw itself 
So I'm going to press down so it squidges down and then just push the knife through and there we have one of our cylinders. Now to install the cylinder um, there should be a cutout in the centre that as you removed it from the uh, backing material of the sticker it probably came with. So what you want to do is just hook the tip of your knife underneath that strip and it should come loose. So there we go, that's what you're looking for. It's that little part in the middle and so we've now got a slot in the top of that cylinder that is probably half a mil to a millimetre wide. Let's just stick a bit off. So now what you can do, if you get your uh, your engine um, assembly as it is at the moment, you should be able to take the sticker or the stickered cylinder and just Offer it up over one of your little fingers poking out. Make sure that the slot is running along the edge of the engine and then just push that down and the top of the engine should push out through like so. So that's, that's what you're looking to do. You've got this bit protruding out of that slot now. Okay, so I've just got to repeat that process eight more times and we can put all of our cylinders onto the uh, assembly. I'm not going to take you through each one in turn. Hopefully the one that I've just did gives you uh, enough clues as to how to do it. Um, and if not, just keep re repeating that uh, part of the video over the next uh, eight uh, cylinders and uh, you'll be good to go. So we're down to the last one here. I haven't glued any of these on. The, uh, they're, they're friction fit um, and also the next part that we're going to put on will hold them in place anyway. So I'm just going to pop this one on. There we go. And there we have the, uh, the makings of our uh, rotary engine. So the next part to go on is um, this uh, P23. Now that has a graphic on one side and as I said before um, you're only going to see this from the front anyway. So when we put this onto the uh, back of the uh, motor here uh, we do it with the graphics facing forward. So when we put it on uh, when we're looking at the back we will just see the unprinted uh, side of the uh, of the part. Now we're going to stick this down and these you'll see these little uh, protrusions here is they've got little spikes on these spikes we're actually going to insert behind the uh, plastic um, part that comes out of the middle of the top of the cylinder head. So we'll probably use the knife just to open up the uh, the sticker to allow these uh, these little spikes to uh, to go in there. So let's first apply a little bit of glue to the front of this part. Just around there. And then pop that on the back. And then we just move the part so that those spikes line up with the center of each of the cylinders. So what we want to achieve now is to pop one of these little spikes here into the top of the cylinder head. So to do that we need to sort of bend it forward like so and then move that spike to the center of the cylinder and let it drop in behind the other plastic part in the center of the cylinder. So 
that's not going fully in, in the, at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just take my knife and just make sure that there is room for it to go in behind. Of course, we've got that two millimeter foam in there as well. So there we go. And in it goes really quickly, really simply in the back there. So we just continue round. We'll open up the space behind the, the plastic cylinder head and then bend that spike forward. It goes over the head there and then just bring it forward so it slips into the slot uh, behind the, uh, the plastic part. I'm going to continue going round here so all of those parts are uh, are slotted in. Um, we're not going to bother gluing them either because um, the structure itself should hold hold very nicely. But uh, I'll come back to you as soon as I've got all that done. So we have all of those little um, tops of the exhaust in place now. And as you can see, now we're looking from the front. You get that little sort of copper pipe look um, sticking, uh, sticking out of the side of the um, the cylinders and uh, and retreating back to the uh, the rear of the uh, rear of the engine. So uh, the final phase of uh, of this uh, particular installation um, is to pop our P twenty twos on. Now they really should have been numbered differently because they are actually uh, different graphics on them. But uh, P twenty two that looks like that with that little sort of black mark on there which is supposed to be the uh, the, the, the sort of nameplate the, the, the um, serial number plate I guess or, or something along those lines information plate that sits on the engine itself um, that goes on the front of the um, of the engine let's just free it In the, uh, oops, if I do it that side, that's easier, isn't it? See it then. So we'll glue that onto the uh, front of the motor. So, and then we'll just flip over, glue the other P22 onto the back of the motor. Now these two parts aren't only decorative. What they do is that they lock the, um, the brass tube into a uh, location um, that uh, will determine how the motor rotates on the um, on the actual prop shaft. So what we need is our prop shaft. I'll just go and grab that. So here we go. Here is our motor and prop shaft. I've I've got a broken one, uh, but I tend to use those in uh, in our builds so that um, uh, obviously we can't we can't pass these on to customers like yourselves, um, but we can use them internally, and of course the whole thing gets stuck down anyway. So um, we've got uh, some excess foam in there. That's it. That's gone. So we're just going to pop the motor onto the um, prop shaft and then we're going to give it a spin and look at it from the side to see how well it does. It's got a bit of a wobble on so I'm just going to move the 
motor so that when I that's that's much better so now my cylinder is uh, my, my um, central tube is actually allowing the motor to spin uh, without too much of a uh, too much of a wobble so just going to give that a final check just a little movement that's looking pretty good so the other thing is I'm just going to move that brass tube a little bit further into the motor so we get a quite a protrusion of the uh, of the brass tube out the front here I've probably got a millimeter of the brass tube showing at the back I'll just pop that on again just to check we haven't moved anything well, that seems to be spinning fine and then we just put that to one side and uh, let it dry off um, so that that uh, that position is set so now we can use our motor and pop it into the uh, the, the motor mount itself so um, that's quite a simple process um, but you do have to slide the main gear in through the uh, the hole at the front first so that it comes through which then allows you to get your the prongs of the plastic gearbox and thread them through the uh, the holes that are provided for them so don't worry if the um, the motor looks slightly offset it hasn't been miscut it mean it, it it's basically uh, made to be like that so that you get some side thrust um, and also you need to make sure that you get the down thrust as well by ensuring that these plates at the side um, that are part of the, the sort of plastic of the motor actually sit flat on the um, surfaces provided so like so and then what you can do is just run a little bit of glue around the edges there. Um, what I like to make sure is that uh, I can actually remove this gearbox should I need to at some point in the future. So if I have to replace the motor or the gears or uh, indeed if I bend the prop shaft, something like that. Um, I can uh, I can get to it and get it uh, get it out. I'm just going to use my little bit of wire just to make sure that the glue is spread to the areas that I need it. I'm just using the uh, the foam to foam here. So there we go. We have a little um, sort of structure at the back of W3 here, and that is to um, allow you to wind in couple of turns of the cable as a bit of strain relief so that if you do because this is removable from the aircraft if you do get it fall away or you get it caught with a hand or something like that it's not going to pull the wires out of the back of the motor um, what it probably do is just uh, in the worst case scenario disconnect the uh, the motor um, from the receiver which is obviously you just plug straight back in so um, so you've got your strain relief now um, so that it's not putting any pressure on the back of the, uh, the the motor and the connections there so that's our um, motor installed the other bit that we can do um, is put our uh, battery plate onto the uh, the structure here and that's essentially where your battery um, will sit and there's a little trick i'd like to show you here um that one of our customers came up with and it actually worked really well so there's a there are scores on the uh, battery plate and uh, sorry the battery plate is p28 and it quite obviously is the battery plate because it's got a picture of a battery on and that actually goes into these little slots that are at the side of the uh, motor installation 
should go so that the actual uh, plastic itself goes all the way up to this front uh, front firewall so it sits into and creates a sort of a little platform there for the uh, for the battery to go on so we're just going to um, glue that in place just running some glue along the edge there and we'll just put that where we had it seated before so let me just go and grab a um, a battery so we can i can actually show you this little trick that uh, i learned from one of our customers so i've got my little battery here this is actually 130 milliamp hour uh, which is actually it works really well for these uh, smaller aircraft uh, but a 150 would do now when it's installed and plugged in it sits here and then obviously that whole um, this whole section with the cowl on as well and our um, dummy motor, dummy rotary, um, goes into the fuselage, twists and locks. Um, uh, obviously you have to hold the battery and, uh, and sort of pop it into the fuselage as you go. Now, um, one of our customers came up with the idea of just simply putting a stirrup over the battery that you can slide it into connect and then you don't have to hold on to the battery it just sits on that platform held by that uh, that retaining um, piece and uh, just make it out of a, a strip of the plastic that we use so um, let me just put all, all the batteries um, like this that have the uh, the integrated connector at one end tend to be a very sort of similar size. So you're looking at about um, 12 millimeters across by uh, probably five millimeters deep. So um, so yeah. So you're looking at sort of 22 to surround the battery, and then. Well, however deep this is if we want to take it down to the bottom there so that's about four four millimeters so eight twelve twenty so we need a strip of around about 30 millimeters long so about yay big um, and as for thickness well it doesn't need to be that thick um, let's just let's just hive off a piece here. Just run our, um, our, our, our straight edge against uh, parallel against the uh, the edge of the material there. Just hive off a strip. So let's just take that graphic off there so let's cut our 30 I said the battery was 12 mil across didn't I so if we find the center of that 15 just mark it with a little notch and then work out so that's six on there and that's zero that's twelve let's just pick that up off the board so Let's 
let's just put a score in there. And another score on the other side of the center point. There. And hopefully we've got ourselves over. out of the way. We should have ourselves a little platform there that we can then slide our battery into. Now that could be a little bit tighter so I'm just going to <laughs> stop pinging that around and just take off a millimetre from the bottom of each leg. go and then I'm just going to overly bend this so that when it when we put it in place it kind of sort of holds on and then I'm going to so I'm going to work out where the midpoint is sort of around about there let's just mark that so just about there I'll just pop a couple of blobs of glue on either side. Of that position. Like so. And then we'll put our little retaining piece on there. That's good. Press down adequately. There we go. We can pop our uh, just positioning this so that the battery is retained, but it's not too tight. Probably done without taking those bits off the end. There we go. So we'll let that dry out now. That'll be pretty resilient once it's uh, once the glue has dried. The plastics tend to to um, adhere really well using the foam to foam. So uh, we'll have a test of that once that's all uh, dried up. Um, but the next process <coughs> we um, can partake of. Uh, is uh, painting the cowl and then cutting the cowl out um, so that we can mount it onto our, uh, our motor mount. So it should be in the bag. Let's grab that out. don't need that anymore. So here is our um, vac formed cowl. Um, now what I like to do is actually paint certainly the outer surface um, before I cut everything out. Um, mainly because it just allows me to keep hold of the uh, the part while I'm painting um, and, uh, and not got my, get my fingers all mucky. So uh, I'll get the um, paints and the paintbrush and uh, we'll get cracking on painting that up. So I've got my uh, paintbrush here, I've got a, a, a rag, I've got some water in a rather mucky jar as well. <laughs> um, and I have some paints. Now on this particular aircraft, the um, Silver. We have a little bit of black as well. Yes, on this aircraft, sorry, as I was saying, my bar 
batteries as well. Um, the Albert Ball aircraft. Um, I believe he had a silver cow, which is quite a nice contrast to the uh, the olive drab of the rest of the aircraft. So we'll uh, paint this up silver. Um, let's get my little mixing tray as well. With tissue stuck in it. So there we go. So I've, I've got some varnishes here, matte and a gloss varnish. Um, and that's to put on afterwards to protect the, uh, the, the paintwork. And I've got here, I've got some um, metal colour. This is aluminium, uh, matte aluminium. And I've also got some black here just to um, add a, a sort of a little dulling effect to the uh, to the, uh, the cowl itself. So um, fortunately on this, obviously, we're not matching any body colour um, so that uh, we can really sort of go to town on what we want to do. I might even do some weathering on it as well, some sort of smoke and oil um, type um, staining. So I'm just uh, giving these a good shake, uh, just so that we, uh, we can, we've got good colour. So yeah, I'm using, I mean, obviously if you've got an airbrush, um, the best quality finishes are always done with, uh, with an airbrush, but I'm gonna go with paintbrush, um, because everyone's got one of those to hand. Um, I have done airbrushing in the past, um, and as much as I love the finish, um, I just the the preparation, the cleaning, and uh, and everything else that goes with it is uh, a bit of a pain in the uh, the, the derriere. Um, quite appropriate for a French plane. Um, so let's get some of this aluminium onto the. paint bit and then I'm just going to add a very small single drop which will probably be far too much so uh, oh no that's uh, that's looking quite good there we go I might add some more aluminium we haven't actually got a lot of paint there now now it's all mixed so more drops, one more blob of black. Give them a mix. Right. Apply our first coat. That's quite nice. It's not overly bright. This acrylic paint as well. Um, dries relatively quickly, which uh, obviously is good for progression, but when you're painting, obviously you've got to get it done fairly quickly. So we certainly may give this a, a second coat. This, um, this brush is quite soft though, so it's not causing too much in the way of streaking so once it's dry we'll uh, assess what we want to do the other beauty of acrylic paints is of course that um, you wash the brush with with well Supposedly, you were supposed to use uh, acrylic thinners, but um, of course, water seems to work just as well. But once again, water's pretty readily available and it doesn't smell unpleasant either. 
most of the time. So there's our first coat and I think even looking at it now I'll probably go for a, a second coat. I'll clean my brush off. let that dry for a few minutes which will give me the opportunity to go and make a nice cup of tea. No sooner had I um, finished cleaning my brush and drying it than I realised that the, um, the paint had already dried. So um, we're going to go at it again. In fact I'm going to use a little bit of water just to water down the, uh, the paint been sitting there for a few minutes drying itself so let's finish the application certainly not going to need anything more than this this particular second coat Go. Right, we'll let that dry off and then we'll come back and uh, do a little bit of weathering I think. I'm going to put a wash onto this now, which is something that I haven't done previously. The idea is to pick out some of the sort of the, well, the few panel lines there are. Um, let's see how we go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some, a very dilute black. So I'm going to pop a splodge on there and then use plenty of water and I'm going to get my, my rag here. Firstly I'm just going to put that wash over the areas that I want picked out and maybe over the rest of it as well it maybe cause a more of a would create more of a sort of a mottled effect go okay. so this is a this is a weathering technique I'm trying that I saw on the uh, on the internet for um, plastic modeling so soak up some of the stuff that's dribbled down the sides But you can play around with this a, a great deal, can't you? But at the end of the day, we'll just have to see what it turns out like. So we'll let that dry off. Just uh, oh, if I, if I dab with the, the cloth, that removes some of it, which is. Um, interesting. The idea was to try and pick out these, as I said before, these sort of lines as well, just to, to highlight them a little more. So we'll see how that goes. We might try some, some streaking as well. 
when that when this um in fact actually what i can do if i add a little bit of red to this it will hopefully create more of a sort of brownie tinge to it so i've got my very bright red here just give that a quick mix and then dried up paint there I'll just get rid of okay right let's see what that um, looks like I'm making a bit of a mess here aren't I so well it's kind of it just sort of looks a bit purple now um, maybe if I add a little yellow, what I'm trying to get here is some sort of more oily looking colour, rather than sort of uh, black sooty colour. That's sort of, that's more of a muddy brown. I might want it a little bit darker. Oh, just as the another great thing about the acrylics is it's it's so easy to uh, to clear up if you do spill. Oh, there we go. That's a sort of brownish black. So we want that want that to sort of virtually dry out. <coughs> and then we're just going to use the brush to sort of almost dry brush onto the onto the cowl. So what we can do is just splodge splodge the brush into it. And then wipe off the excess. Let's just still probably too much. Still got red all over me as well. Oh well, we can wash that off. So just really get all the paint out of the brush and then sort of streak it from the from the cowl itself. seems to be giving quite a good of subtle effect good okay well I kind of like the way that looks it's a little bit grubby a little bit worn. Good. Right. Okay. Well, we'll let that dry off, which will take a few seconds, literally. <clears throat> and then we'll, we will hit it with um, some um, some varnish. So let's get our varnish out here. What we'll do before is I'm going to just clean this tray off. Just 
one for winding excess paint using the rag. And I need to go and get some more rag. Now bear with me a second while I do that. So, new cloth. Um, most of the red paint removed from fingers. And I've got my gloss and my matte varnish here. Now, I'm sure you can get an eggshell varnish as well, but I've got both. And what I'm going to do is, you probably guessed it, do a quick mix. So, one, two, three, four drops of the gloss. One, two, three, four, five drops of the mat. And swirl that all together with our cleaned brush, which nearly soaks up everything. And then on our painted cowl, just apply. Now I'm getting a few bubbles come up with this, but um, they'll they'll um, disappear as the varnish dries. And this acts as a very good uh, protecting shell for the um, the paint. I have noticed before with acrylics, they can, um, yeah, cheap paint brushes. Um, yeah, the, the, the colours can rub off um, a little more readily than um, they do with uh, enamel paints. So, So a, a, a clear coat varnish is always a very good idea. I'm not painting that centre bit. I'm just basically trying to get it into the, uh, the edges around here because, of course, we're going to remove that central part. Good. OK, and we need another... Probably give that a good um, 25 minutes to uh, to dry, 25, 30 minutes, and then we can go from there. Whilst we're waiting for that to dry, um, the other thing on page 31 of the assembly guide, I think we could probably <coughs> um, add the stickers to our prop. So here's my GWS forty five thirty, or is it GW EP forty five thirty? Is technically the uh, the correct name. Now you, this is uh, a bit that I like to do. You don't have to though, um, but there are these uh, raised markings on the prop itself. The GWS on one side and the EP4-4530 on the other. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we're going to put the, um, the stickers on. Um, and what I like to do is just get rid of those markings. Obviously, when, if you're using a knife, be very careful not to dig into the, uh, the prop itself and just sort of skim over the surface to get the raised lettering off. There is a little two down there as well. So just run the blade over. And the GWS on this side. If you want to want to make a proper job of it, then you can also take to your sanding stick of 
obviously this scratches the surface of the prop um, which I don't mind particularly because obviously we're going to be covering this with a uh, with a sticker so it doesn't matter what the surface looks like our new surface is going to be that of the uh, of the sticker itself so right so now what we want to do is pop these two um, sticker parts onto our blades and the best way of doing this is uh, to wet apply them um, which means that we um, we add some liquid to the sticky side of the sticker once again this is a a relatively delicate sticker because of all the cut-ins um, so you need to take care when peeling it off that you don't split it if you do it's still usable but um, so how do we get fluid on this side of the sticker I've got a few blobs of I don't know what on there must have been in my hands um well what I do, and I'm not going to show you this, but I literally lick it. And that actually puts some saliva onto the underside. Yep. So it doesn't stick. And I also do the same with the prop itself. So that's now wet with saliva. And look, <laughs> I've just managed to split my sticker not all the way so i am just going to pop it on the one side and then hopefully because i haven't torn it all the way off when i come to stick it down the other side that split won't matter so with the um, cutouts in the sticker you should be able to form it around the the central boss of the prop um, and then make sure the alignment is good all the way up the trailing edge of the prop you can turn it over and just see how you're doing and you'll notice that there might be a little bit of an overhang at the the tip there so the idea being is that when the um, the liquid dries off, you will be able to press these parts together and they'll um, stick to each other. So I'm just going to add a little more wet to the inside and then fold that over. And well, there is a very very small hairline where that uh, split is. So hopefully being back on the back of the prop it won't, unless you're looking really closely, you're not going to see that, uh, that split at all. So in fact, by moving that slightly, I've almost completely obliterated it now. So Just because it, the, um, the surfaces are wet, I can manipulate this sticker to best fit it onto, uh, onto the prop, onto the blade. Okay, let's do the other one, see if we can get this <laughs> on without ripping it. Is that detached? Wow. 
wet it. We'll wet it again. On we go. A little quicker to do if you haven't split it split it in half. Okay. So we can now pop that down and let that dry off. Our cowl is nice and dried off now, so we can now start thinking about uh, extracting this from the um, surrounding plastic. Now I like to use a pair of scissors to do a rough chop, um, or not so rough a chop, around the um, around the lower edge. And just very carefully. Cut away at the material as close to, if not bang on, the uh, the junction between the horizontal and vertical. Very careful process. Requires a lot of concentration. Hence the complete lack of talking. So, get rid of that. Now we have a we have an edge, which is relatively rough. So what we can do is what I want to avoid doing is sanding the edge that way. What I want to do is sand the edge this way so that I don't cause any problems um, for the for the paint. So it's just literally a matter of going around and sanding off the last bits that remain from the um, from cutting off with the scissors. I'm being quite delicate because, of course, the um, back form part is. Uh, is relatively delicate as well so it's quite a thin part lightweight etc so just taking it all sort of one step at a time not rushing at this at all So, next step, I think I'm, I'm happy with that, that looks alright, I haven't got any um, white bits falling off, it might be slightly flared, um, but we can, um, we can see what we can see once uh, we've got it completed. So let's just remove the inside of, uh, of the part, so this is easier to do with the knife. 
and I'm literally going around the um, once again the join between the horizontal and the and the vertical. Obviously, be very careful on how far you push the the blade in. Um, what you don't want to do is it impacting on the inside of the back formed part. This is where you need a lot of light and uh, magnifying glasses. Or glasses, maybe. The knife seems to go through this material quite well, though. If I keep cutting and turning, cutting and turning. it all through so there's a little tidying to do I haven't been completely thorough so now if you're fortunate enough to own something like a Dremel um, or some sort of electrical miniature sanding system that works very well in these uh, circumstances So <laughs> I seem to have taken off a whole load of paint with the, with my knife, um, not paying attention. So anyway, we'll just need to touch that up a little bit. So I'm just going to continue um, hacking around at the uh, the plastic on the inside of this rim, um, just to make sure I've got it as even as possible. Um, I'm not going to subject you to that whole process. Um, I'm sure it, it will become very familiar to you. So I'll come back once that's done. So I've um, cleaned everything up. Um, I've got, uh, got that rim down to where I wanted it to. You can see there the uh, extent of the carving out of the plastic. Um, you'll also notice that there are a few areas where the paint has come off. Maybe I didn't leave it enough time to uh, to dry off properly. I should have maybe left it overnight. But um, what I'm going to do now, rather than try and touch that up, I'm going to wait until I've got this now um, installed on the motor mount. Um, to uh, That'll give me something to hold on to whilst I, uh, I touch up and repaint the, uh, the bits that have been taken off so we can we can progress now on um, on our quest for uh, for bringing this together um so this sits on the motor mount like so um these two uh sort of mimicked um joins here or panel um lines sit at the at the top so you've got 
um, this peg here that's right in the middle that you can judge the uh, the top by and make sure that it is sitting where it should and um, you'll notice that when it is mounted in um, you should have a, a bit of an overlap at the back so that the um, when you're pushing this forward you've probably got a millimeter of overlap sticking backwards from the cowl um, or the, the plywood um, of the plastic cowl and that will go over the um, exposed plywood at the front of the aircraft so before we attach this though firstly um, we need to work out well actually before we do that I don't think we if you have get my words right here if you have one of these tools um, then uh, getting the ballast which goes into the cowl um, into the cowl uh, can be made a lot easier using this tool um, now in the manual it shows you putting the uh, the ballast in three different areas that avoid so you've got one two uh, in four different areas i believe let's just i'll just check on that well no just the one area sorry i was thinking of another aircraft so it actually tells you to put the ballast um, down the bottom here um, which we're we're going to do um, on some of our kits you put the um, the the ballast in between these um, these prongs here um, on the inside of the the cowl itself but uh, okay let me get our ballast and uh, we'll start installing that into our cowl so here I have my ballast strip it's quite generous I don't think we'll be using all of this um, I tend to build the aircraft quite light anyway so I'm probably going to use or probably drop about a quarter of it so I'm going to probably use about um, about that much there I'll leave that in reserve if I need to add any more I've got that um, that little strip there so let me just take that away put that over there and then we're going to install this into our cow around that kind of area there and we do have these prongs here to uh, manage as well so what we'll do is just going to place the cowl where it's going to go and we have a sharpie and I'm just going to dot inside of the cowl just to show me where my limits are with regards to those little uh, mounting bits so if I were to put put that in fact, I might actually take away some more so I can fit in between those that looks good that's that's where I want it to go so um, I'm actually going to run some glue into the area that I want the ballast to go although the ballast itself is self adhesive and I'm going to push it as far forward as I can in the uh, in the cowl So I'm just going to let that dry off and then we can start putting our ballast into place.
Okay, let's have a bit of a tidy up whilst that continues to dry. We'll keep that there, keep that there. We'll put that over there for now. Get rid of the scissors. And we'll put that in a safe place. In our little baggy. go right looks like it's suitably dry let's peel the backing of the ballast and then place it It on the glue. Oh. <laughs> Actually, the, the glue on the um, ballast is very sticky, especially on your fingers. So, now this being made of a nice malleable alloy, we should be able to use a squishing tool. to pop this ballast neatly into place out of the way of our spinning rotary. by applying pressure through the ball itself on the end, it seems to be settling in quite well, although not exactly where I wanted it. So man handling it into where I want it exactly to go and then apply our squishy method just use that to if you don't have um a tool like that I, I do suggest getting one but if you don't then you can always use the back of a, a knife like this as well so that um, that works very well but this is the tool of choice for this uh, this job as well as many others Nice. It, it flattens down really well as well um, the uh, the ballast although it's um, that's slightly raised when you uh, receive it it can be made to uh, flatten out quite nicely I was worried that it might damage the paint underneath with that against the board, but no, that's um, that's done quite well. You can see there where I've done it. It's not a, not a perfect position by uh, by any means, but um, it's uh, it's hopefully going to do um, for uh, for what we need it for. Once again, it's not visible, but if you do like getting things nice and equal and even, then obviously. Uh, you 
keep going at it until you uh, you have that. What I am going to check is whether our prongs do or don't get in the way when it's uh, installed. No, that seems absolutely fine. Good. So with ballast installed, we can now start thinking about popping the motor, the dummy rotary in there. Make sure that it spins without catching. And then if we pop the cow on just temporarily, just to make sure, see what's going on with the rotary once that's installed it seems like that spins freely now if it doesn't if you find it's catching somewhere um, then check that your motor is mounted completely flat um, and then you've got the correct angles um, because that generally is what will uh, will do it so the first check is pop it on there and it should spin freely without touching anything and then the second check is to pop the cowl on and hold it in a uh, place you think you're going to stick it and then you can spin the rotary again just to make sure that and you can you, you can obviously normally feel if it's uh, going to touch or catch on anything so the next phase is to glue this in place, glue the cow on to here. Um, but before we do, we are just going to check the fit of this onto the uh, the fuselage, which should it will just make it easier for us to uh, to see. Now, um, whilst we're here, let's get rid of one of the tails. So I'm literally there we go. I actually used the the back of the knife there because that's the bit that's hardly ever used, so it remains very sharp. So all I did was just take off the uh, the tail from the, um, the the rigging position there. So just pop the. Uh, the electronics cable through the motor cable through there and then we'll just make sure that those um, those little hooks line up and go into the fuselage as required which these do, but they are quite stiff at the moment. Now, in time, with the front coming on, on and off a few times, that will certainly loosen up. But the other thing you can do is add a little bit of wax, which really does help. So if you get the wax, I don't actually have any here, it's at home but if you actually put a little bit of candle wax what I do is I tend to uh, light the candle and just use the bits that uh, that melt at the top of the candle and just coat the, the hooks there and there and the um, the wood here as well and just make sure that the uh, just just a thin coat of wax and that helps the uh, insertion and rotation of the um, of those little retaining hooks into this area here. The all, also the other thing I, I notice is that um, there is a little bit of uh, foam there that's um, that's showing. So I'm just going to uh, back away at that just to remove that from the equation.
Oops, I'm going to come back like that. So we shall have to use the power of the knife for all of it. Just try that again. So it seems that either the hooks are turning in a bit, or we just need to splay them out slightly. Be careful doing this because obviously this is where the those hooks are are delicate. Probably didn't see me doing that, did you? So I'm just I'm just holding on to the hooks there. I'm just pulling outwards slightly just to help them splay. Now I wouldn't do this if I hadn't coated these in CA glue. They're much stronger now. So let's just see how that does. So that works very well. So now that's locked on the front there. The magnets have come into play and uh, and everything is working as it should. Let me just pop the cowl on the front there. You can see the position that it should take up just there at the front so that it's up against the, uh, the foam of the fuselage. In fact, that little flare that we've got at the at the end works very well. So, uh, so that's how it should look. Obviously, we should have the uh, the rotary inserted there. But um, yeah, so happy with the way that that mounts with that candle wax in place. That should be even better. So we just need to carefully remove this now. Go and pop in, pop on our rotary. And I just made the mistake <laughs> pushing. That's it. Just need that that brass slightly proud at the back there. Check once again. Yeah, that's fine. And then it's about a little bit of patience. In fact, I'm just going to remove the motor for now. Oh. Okay. And then add the glue edges of the firewall and down those little supportive sprongs and then I'm going to pop the cowl in place So making sure that the, the centre, the top centre of the firewall is in the middle of those two uh, panel lines there. Make sure we've got a bit of an overhang that's relatively even all of the way around the cowl. So the overhang is uh, of the plastic from the vac formed cowling um, over the plywood. And then once we're happy, it is. I was just thinking about the mistake of 
adding that with not having the motor in place. So <laughs> let's make sure we don't make that mistake. And then pop this back on. Jove, it still rotates. Okay, let's get the parts for the wheels. We have some plastic parts, we have some 2mm foam parts, and of course, we have our 1mm foam parts as well, which form the outer skin, as you can see, of the, uh, of the wheels for the Albert Ball Newport. So let's get these cut out and we'll come back and start the assembly process. So here, here we have the parts to make the wheel up. We've got obviously our, our tyres and our little um, one millimetre carbon fibre axle. And we also got our uh, Z15 um, and Z14 parts which form the skin. Um, we've got some plastic parts here as well, um, including um, the uh, P10 that was cut out. Now you may notice um, these are supposed to sit on the back of the wheels and they're supposed to be the same colour as the back of the wheels or close. Um, these are still grey so um, the kit that you get um, they will actually be coloured correctly but um, I'm uh, here stuck with my prototype build um, and I've got uh, grey ones to, uh, to attach so fortunately they are um, not particularly visible on, on the aircraft um, so um, I, I've decided to uh, to carry on regardless. Um, so the first thing we um, can actually do is um, using our um, axle as a bit of a guide to assembling this, we can take our um, P10 parts, or certainly one of them, and place it with the graphic on the back and place it onto our axle. Now we're not going to actually glue it onto the axle, but what we're going to use is the axle as a guide to uh, to bring this all together. So the next step is to put on the uh, the, the back of the wheel, uh, namely the um, Z15 part, and we're going to glue that to our uh, our disc that's already on there, our, Z, uh, our P10 I should say. Spot of glue down there. Pop that on the back, like so. And the next part to sit down on there is a, a D15. And let's just let's just open that up again. Pop into there. It's like sort of building a, a wheel kebab <laughs> on a skewer. So when we pop that up through, you can see that there is a uh, a rim created around because the uh, D15 is smaller than the uh, the foam underneath. So we make sure that that's sitting nice and central. It's well pressed together, like so. And the next part we put on is our little uh, D14. We'll just add a little bit of glue onto that. Our wheel kebab. Go. Okay. 
you can also give it a twizzle now and again just to make sure that your uh, your wheel is running true it's not wobbling around all over the place and essentially the part that's now going to lock how your wheel rotates in place is the last little plastic piece which is p11 and that sits on top of the d14 part there so let's just add a little speck of glue to that too bit of a splintering of the carbon fibre which has taken position on the underside. Let's just remove that and then put that into place. And that plastic combined with the plastic on the rear side of the wheel will give you your balance on how the wheel rotates so i'm just spinning that at the moment you can see there's not a great deal of wobble but if we position it while the glue is still wet on certainly that p11 part go and we can set that aside to dry off um, and we can build our second wheel and I'm going to do it on the opposite side but once again I'm not going to be gluing it onto the axle I actually want to take it off um, certainly to get the axle installed in the aircraft um, we need only one wheel to be attached and the other one to uh, to not be attached so that we can poke this through the uh, the holes in the undercarriage so I'll crack on and uh, and put that all together and then we'll come back and uh, I'll show you uh, about putting the the front parts onto these wheels So, both wheels done now. On comes score guys. And we are going to score our little Z14s. So, here we go. Don't need that. Let's give a, a fresh few strips of uh, low tack tape. Let's get scoring. I'll try not to get my head in the way this time. A bit of carbon fiber. Because this simulates the, um, the the spokes underneath the uh, canvas cover covering that the uh, the wheels had. Go. Now there are a few things that we need to do to this part before we attach. Um, namely, the V-cut. Uh, we just need to uh, complete that up to the hole. 
So I'm just going to remove that last bit of material. Um, and the other thing we can do, if we're very careful, is just put a tiny little bit of a chamfer on the inside of the V itself. So it's not a particularly shallow V. These two parts are just going to come and join together so that they'll form a cone. Um, but before we do that even, we're just going to make sure, just by it, I'm going to roll the whole thing up, just make sure each one of those scores is, uh, is folded. So well, it looks like, oh look, I've missed one. You probably noticed that while I was doing it. I missed the one that goes up the middle there. Go. Roll that all around like so. There we go. And then I'm going to pop a spot of glue on the inside of the V on one side. Constantly clogging tip at the moment. Must be the warm weather. So just add some glue along there. And then I am going to bring both sides together so that some of that glue is transferred. Then I'm going to let it fall open, pop that to one side let the glue dry and whilst it's drying I shall crack on and do the second of the two wheels. So once uh, we've created these two parts you can see on this one I've already brought the two halves of the uh, of the slip together. Um, so what we need to do is literally just press these this V together and because we've chamfered um, you shouldn't get too much of a join and the glue should grab immediately which this one isn't because I haven't left it long enough too impatient to get all, along with the, uh, the video but that will um, that'll settle in and we'll, uh, we'll make sure of that so uh, I'll pop that to one side now obviously what we need to do is get our little wheel hubs onto the wheel itself so they should literally just sort of sit on the wheel like so now the rims the two rims that these create and this is on here so you've got the put that back on you've got the uh, the, the rim at the back of the wheel there and the rim at the front of the wheel and these hold the uh, the tire on, so they need to be glued fairly solidly. Well, we know the one at the back is fairly is, is nice and solid. It's glued to the uh, two millimeter foam plate there. Um, but the uh, the front one, um, we need to make sure that that gets solidly put down as well. So I'm just going to be adding generous amounts of glue right around the rim of the two millimeter um, part of the wheel plenty 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 and also the edge of the smaller shoulder there and then once I've applied that glue I am then going to pop my hub on the front bring it down to bear on all of the places it comes into contact with and then I'm going to pull that back and open that up and let that dry and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Glue 
all the way all the way around the rims of both of the two mil foam parts. Then the hub off. So, we're going to pop that to one side. I'm going to let the glue dry on that before we bring those uh, hubs back onto the wheels. So, with our glue now dry, these should sit on here an absolute treat. And I'm going to quite firmly press them into place. So, there we go. Now, under normal circumstances, I would probably allow a few hours, if not overnight, for the um, the glue to completely cure. But I think they had a good a good long time to dry off anyway. So, what I'm going to do is um, mount the tyres onto the rim. It should be a relatively simple process. Do it from the rear of the wheel because the inner rim is slightly smaller than the outer rim, um, which should make it easy to uh, to slide the the tire on. So there we go. There's one on, and then I'll pop the other one onto this wheel. And we can now install our wheels, but before we do that, once again, we can get rid of these excess. Um, <laughs> you can't see them, can you? excess bits of rigging there we go so now the axle should insert through the hole at the bottom of the undercarriage leg like so and then the other should pop on side hmm. or not let's just unwind this just going to add a little bit of a point to the carbon fiber so it's got uh, a bit of a, a guiding passage into the wheel and then uh, that's much better so let's try that again On this should pop. There we go. Of course, um, it's running nicely. Um, of course, you can glue the wheels on um, should you wish. That saves losing them. Um, they're quite a good friction fit, but uh, obviously a little bit of glue um, on there would uh, would certainly help secure them. 
Um, so entirely up to you. But, um, but there we go. My wheels are on. So what we have left to do is um, we have the um, top gun to mount, but before we do that, we're actually going to install the electronics into the aircraft, which is a little bit of a, um, a precision um, mounting uh, because we actually sit the electronics in this area here. Um, and they sit actually upside down in the uh, in the aircraft. Um, so let me go and get the parts we need uh, for that, and we can also rig up the tail feathers. It's easier to do it before we put the top gun on because obviously we can lie this flat on the uh, on the build surface, whereas with the gun on, um, we would have to have some sort of platform to ensure that uh, uh, the we didn't knock the gun off. So. I'll just go and get the electronics and uh, I'll be back in a sec. So, electronics, here we come. Now, this particular model is designed around our all-in-one um, receiver unit. Uh, this is the brushed version, um, five channel, and we've got the um, uh, the port, the uh, battery plug here. Uh, there's a port for the, um, the the motor just there, two pin port, um, and you've got your onboard servos here. This is actually um, one of our um, stabilized versions with the um, SR3X system installed. Now, usually used for uh, four channel aircraft. This is a three channel aircraft, but it's got a very effective rudder. So I thought I'd give it a go, and uh, what I've done within the um, the uh, access software to this uh, receiver, I've actually turned the aileron port into the uh, or the rudder port into the aileron port, so that the aileron controls on my transmitter um, uh, translate to uh, the rudder servo moving on here. Um, so uh, what we should get is the stabilized system um, should activate the rudder rather than the ailerons if it detects a uh, an issue in the x-axis, i.e. the roll axis. axis. So uh, anyway, before you install your receiver, the best thing to do is make sure that it works. Um, obviously we don't want to get it all installed in the aircraft itself and uh, just to find out that there's a, a problem or an issue so uh, the first thing to do is bind it to your transmitter um, and uh, and go from there so th this is already bound um, but um, uh, the reason that I, I bound it beforehand is with the spectrum uh, combination um, to get them bound, it usually takes around about six or seven meters between them um, to actually affect that. So uh, rather than traipsing off six or seven meters away from the camera, I thought I'd just bring it here. So, so now my aileron control, my right stick, so this is a uh, mode two, um, is there. I have no rudder control there. That doesn't move anything. Obviously that's an elevator control. And uh, not that I have a motor um, actually plugged in at the moment, but that is the uh, acceleration. It'd be a good idea um, to actually make sure that that all works. So let's plug in um, with these, uh, with the board up this way, red is right. So that uh, is my little, my little saying. So put the red lead in the right hand side and the motor should spin in the right direction so, so there we go a little rotary engine going, going nuts there um, it won't vibrate so much <laughs> once we have the um, the prop actually put in place that'll lock everything together so it won't vibrate but uh, yeah so everything is working fine the um, temperature on the servos, I, what I actually normally do is 
I'll, I'll lift the uh, motor up to the bottom of my lip, um, bottom of my lower lip, just to get an idea of the temperature. Um, and if they're all cool and uh, not not warm after being um, circulated, if one's getting very hot, then then you have a problem. Um, but uh, and if you have a problem, obviously let us know and uh, we'll ensure that we get uh, get it sorted for you. So that's all working. We can now move ahead to install this into the aircraft. So to install, we need a little pad like this um, to, uh, to pop the receiver onto. In fact, the pad is probably a little bigger than it needs to be, so we can cut it down a bit. Um, let's just get the scissors. So if I line this up, what we don't want um, when we actually come to lay this uh, into the aircraft is we do not want any uh, self-adhesive stuff uh, coming out underneath the, uh, the main gears of the servos. Um, that would cause the servos to bind and obviously then not work. Um, so we can also see here that um, we've got about yay much overhang on the uh, on the back of the uh, the receiver board. So we can actually just remove that from there. So that's now a uh, good fit. Um, and also, on the underside, we've got a series of chips, show you here, a series of chips here surrounding the, uh, the motor port. Um, and those are part of the electronic speed controller. They do tend to get quite warm, so it would be a good idea we don't insulate it, um, but we actually cut out a, a portion of this sticky pad. So I'm just going to mark whereabouts that would work best. And then take the scissors to it. And just push the knife through the top part there. There we go. So now when we bring this down, we've got our electronic speed controller is open to the uh, elements, as it were. So let's just peel off the first side. Stick that down. And then with positioning in the fuselage, we want this to go as far back into the fuselage as it can. Now, um, you'll appreciate when you build this that there is a lip here, which informs the, uh, the second bulkhead back, just sitting just before the cockpit. And that is what we can buttress our receiver up against. So... If I put it in at the moment just with the uh, the backing paper on so it doesn't stick, um, that's the sort of position you want it in, like so. Fairly central to the, uh, to the pad there and uh, as far back as it will go. So that up a bit so it doesn't uh, come back. That actually that's long enough to impact on the next um, the next bulkhead along. So anyway let's peel off the other side and also what I'm going to do is um, just wrap my power lead underneath the motor port 
and that'll keep it away from the cogs on one of the servos. So. Position is good. I'm just going to get my thumb in there, push down, make sure that pad has got everything well and truly stuck. There we go. So that's now in place. Now all we have to do now is hook up the servos. So we need our control rods. We will need our Sharpie and we will need a set of pliers as well. Those will probably do. So our control wires, as you can see, are vastly too long, but it's a, a one-size-fits-all with the uh, with the Microasis control rods. So what we need to do is cut them down to size. Now, before we do, they have got a little bit of a bend to them, so I'm just going to straighten the uh, piano wire out to some extent. clinging on to the aircraft, there we go, let's put that over there for now. So the one we have to hand here is, the the difference between the two is this, uh, the way that the um, Z-Bend is oriented. So on this one, it's at 90 degrees to the, uh, the U-Bend. Uh, this one, it should be in line with the U-Bend itself. If it's not, then you can always give it a quick tweak. You can always give it a quick tweak just to line it up. So, one is for elevator and one is for rudder. So, the elevator is the one that has the 90 degree twist from the Z-Bend and the U should always point downwards on the aircraft. So that should go in like so. So let's just thread it through the hole provided. You can actually view it from the front so you can see what you're doing. And the elevator should be the servo on the left hand side here. If you are in any doubt, you can always plug your receiver back in again. Just to check. In fact, no. Uh, yes, indeed. My elevator. I was using the rudder there. <laughs> My elevator is the one on the left hand side. Let's just elevate that so you can see. So, so now I know. So, the first process, oh, actually, while we're here, changing the subject slightly, I didn't see in the instructions, and uh, you may correct me if I'm wrong, or we might have corrected it before this goes out, um, that there was no indication of attaching the sticker 
to the underside there to cover up that little white mark. So I'm going to do that right now. So this is S37. Just going to grab that, and that is literally going to go down to the centre there. So what we've done is uh, we've hooked up the uh, the elevator here on our preliminary installation of the control rods. And obviously we've got a very long control rod out the front of the aircraft. We need to uh, put a, um, a bend in that so that we can hook it into the, um, the receiver. And so what we're going to do is actually get our Sharpie inside. First we are going to put our control rod next to our servo arm and if you've used these servos before you'll know that the main hole to put the uh, rod through sits at the, uh, the the back of the arm as as we look at it um, so what I want to do is put a mark as to where the back of the arm is whilst ensuring that our elevator is sitting as flat as possible. So. so I think I have it. So I'm not sure if you can see into the recesses of the aircraft there but you can see the the servo arm there it's just trying to position it oh, I've got the glitching coming up it's got away anyway I've got my mark there I'm going to take this back out So we can observe the mark. So it's quite a wide mark I've made there, but it's the front of that mark that um, I believe is closest to where the uh, the hole for the servo is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pliers and put it at that mark, like so. And then I'm going to orient my control wire as it would be running through the aircraft itself. Let's just pop that upside down again. So it would be running through the aircraft like so. So I need my bend to go off in this direction. So that's indeed what I will do. So I'll just pop that bend in. And this goes over the 90 degree, probably around about 110. You can probably see there, that's probably a little bit too much. I'll just bring that back. A smidge. There we go. And then we need to cut the excess off, um, which I'll need a bigger pair of pliers for. Uh, I'm just knocking everything over. So I'm going to leave a tail of, say, about eight millimeters so 
can see I'm just about to remove So now the, the bend should also be perpendicular to the U bend, like so. So that sort of sits upright or well downright uh, when uh, when installed in the aircraft and the aircraft's up the right way. So let's insert this. That goes into the slot there. That should carry all the way forward. So we can check this going through by eye by just looking down the front of the aircraft. It should come in like so. So now we'll hook it up once again, this end. We can bend our control horn. Um, that's it's designed that way. And then we can take a look and see how we are faring with our hook. Now the trickiest part of it is actually getting the hook through the hole it requires a little bit of maneuvering with the tweezers but it usually goes through quite nicely so as you can see there we've got a slight uptick on the elevator there I think we're probably close enough though that either I can take that out in the sub trim on the transmitter or we can squeeze the U-bend together slightly. It'll only take a little pinch to bring that uh, to bring that down. So, um, in fact, I'll might give it a quick tweak now. Mm. So that's one installed. So we do use exactly the same technique um, for the rudder, apart from obviously the uh, attachment is oriented uh, 90 degrees. From our previous uh, attachment, so pull this through and we can bend our control horn up and pop okay if it's not going through then we can use our little wire technique so we get the little excess wire that we've cut off Oh, I wish I had fingernails. <laughs> I can't pick anything up. Uh, and just run it through. Run it through that hole. We may have got a little bit of glue in there or something like that. Um, and then let's go again. Bend that up out of the way. Pop our rod through and then turn over. Lay it alongside the, uh, the servo for the rudder. As you can probably see there. And then a little mark where we think that bend should be. 
ensuring that the rudder is nice and neutral. Move. Get to the uh, end of the black mark. The tail on this is going to be slightly shorter um, because it crosses the uh, into the um, receiver so there's potential for it to snag on stuff so I'm going to take that down to look probably six six millimeters Six. So we thread this through. Hook up. Then, hopefully, do the same this end. There we go. And that looks a little better. So, let's just check our controls. So we should have rudder and elevator. And they're even going in the right direction. Fantastic. So that's how you hook up your tail feathers and install the uh, the receiver. It's um, pretty straightforward, but can be a bit fiddly um, if uh, you don't follow these particular steps. It's useful to have the um, the the uh, marker pen, especially a permanent marker pen. Um, it allows you to get a much more accurate idea of where that bend has got to be. Um, I would give you dimensions, but they can vary depending on where the receiver gets put, um, how you build the back of the plane. So there is a little bit too much variation in there to be certain about how long those, uh, uh, those rods should be. But as is, that should, uh, that should work fine. Just have to oh, have to build the um, the machine gun and also the aileron control arms. Not that we have ailerons on the aircraft, but on the new port, um, on the actual scale side of things, um, you can actually see these control arms. So we've got them. To actually install on the uh, on the aircraft themselves themselves, so or itself. So so let's grab the plastics. Let's get uh, put my transmitter to one side. Um, and obviously, also we need to uh, 
put the finishing touches to the, uh, the prop and the uh, and the, the cowl as well. But first, we'll do these these little details. So the aileron control arms are the P11 parts on the sheet. So these rather unusual looking pieces here. Now they've got a little fold line in the middle, so don't go cutting through that. Um, but uh, otherwise, feel free to pop them from there. And use my turnover technique again so I can see where those little tabs are. go pop those out so as I say, say these fold up make sure this things look like a pair of, uh, pair of glasses you hold up and yeah anyway silly me <laughs> bring the tiny excess off the edge and we're going to obviously fold these over and stick them together so that the only thing we really need to do is pop a little bit of glue oh no i'm not all bummed up again tiny little bits of glue and then that over and line it all up and just mirror one another so it gives you slightly thicker art and also obviously image on both sides So I'll uh, carry on with this and I'll get the machine gun parts out and, uh, and get back to you. So I've put both of the uh, aileron control parts together and here we have our machine gun. Um, this once again is a fold over part. So literally all we have to do is pop some glue on the uh, inside there and bring it all together and then the last piece of the puzzle is the um, ammunition can which sits on top of uh, the machine gun obviously there we go it's good now apparently I was reading that uh, Albert Ball was a which is obviously this particular livery of the Newport. Um, Albert Ball was a bit of a, a, a dab hand at using this machine gun um, at a tilted angle upwards and firing into uh, from into enemy aircraft from underneath, which is obviously a good place to attack because you can't be seen very well. So he was a bit of an expert in that. Quite unusual and quite a skill to be... Uh, able to do that as well so the can the machine gun canister or ammunition canister 
Z18, Z19 and Z21. So Z18 and Z19 have the, the drum um, graphics on. Z21 is the cream in the sandwich. Cream cheese, I should say, in the sandwich. Put the cream in the sandwich. So, <clears throat> we're going to attach Z21 and Z19, first of all. Both have these little slits in. So we want those slits to line up. So that's, that's your Z21. That's your Z19. And as I said, they both have slits in that will line up when we attach them. So let's just pop a bit of glue. Bring those together, making sure that slit's lined up. Put that down, and then Z18, we're going to sandwich on the other side. So we have a stack of three, like so. No need to line a slit up, there isn't one. And then round the outside of that, because obviously it's just a, a white edge there, we should have a sticker, uh, S33. So there we go, S33. Peel that off, and that's our edge sticker to wrap around our little stack. It should be pretty darn good fit. Now you should have a little more than you actually require to go all the way around. So it's up to you. You can either nip it off or just keep wrapping. Till it's all used up. Okay. So that little slot in the bottom there should accommodate the little blip on the on the gun there. On top of the machine gun. And that should just pop on like so. But obviously what we're going to do is add a little bit of glue so that doesn't come flying off when the aircraft goes flying off. Marvellous. So this little item just sits in the slots provided. We've got a couple of tabs at the bottom there and there and that should neatly sit so I'm trying to find the tabs <laughs> I'm sure there's one there somewhere Not the one at the back, but not at the front. So I'm going to just create one. So there we go. That's how it all comes together on the top of the wing. 
and obviously just add a little bit of glue to make sure that it stays there. In goes one slot, in goes the other. Fabulous. So the final parts of the build. Oh, we haven't put our uh, little aileron parts on yet. They actually sit in these slots here in the wing, and the protruding prong at the bottom should go through to the little hole in the forward deck. They are purely decorative for a little bit of scale authenticity and just require popping into place just just doing it as a bit of a dry fit so I can get used to where I need everything to be and then I'm going to add a little bit of glue so I'm just going to pop the glue on the front portion here of the, the setup just there where it comes into contact with the front of the slot in the wing so, through just make sure that Prong goes through into the hole. And just have a bit of a fiddle to put this in the neutral position. So there's one down, another to go, I'm actually going to put a little bit of uh, glue on the end of the prong as well where it goes into the, into the hole in the deck. Here we go. Fantastic. Good. So we haven't got a pilot in there at the moment. Um, so that's something we need to do as well. But um, before we do that, let us get our um, motor and prop and the little um, boss um, plastic part at the um, front of the aircraft mounted. Oh, I'm going to show you something after this um, because on the Albert Ball uh, aircraft um, 
Albert Ball actually did something a little bit different. He had a spinner on the front of his aircraft. Um, he thought it would improve aerodynamics, which apparently it did. Um, so we shall uh, have something in the kit that allows you to represent that particular spinner. So we won't actually need the uh, the P29, but I'm going to show you that anyway, because on all of the other Newport builds, you need one of these. So uh, I'll go and get the parts necessary. So on all other builds, so on all other builds, um, what we need to do is we get our little rubber uh, prop adapter and we take off that little nubbin at the end with a suitable knife. Make sure it comes off nice and flush. And uh, what I like to do is just rough this surface up a bit. Rubber is uh, one of the more difficult things to adhere to, so the more chance we give the adhesive, the better. Um, and then what we can do is pop this into our um, propeller. I'm just squishing down our now dried um, prop stickers. So we're going to pop that into the centre of our prop, twisting it in, making sure it is firmly secure. Then we grab our P29. Leaping out of the, uh, the sheet. Is there anything else we need on that sheet? I don't think there is. Right, I'll put that in the bin. So, what we're going to do is just add a little glue to the box itself. It must be the temperature. Onto the front of the prop like that. And then our little prop boss just sits on top like that. Now, as I said, on the bald build, um, it's slightly different. We are going to pop a spinner on. So a little vac formed spinner, very unusual, just a, it's a dome essentially um, that sits in front there. In fact, this one might be a little bit too big, so we might make a smaller one. <laughs> but uh, this was just a bit of an experiment to see. So, so to pop the prop on, um, we obviously we've got, you'll notice here, we've got the, um, the brass tube from the centre of the dummy motor um, sitting proud. What we want to do really, the ideal um, situation is that we prop, push the prop on and it locks the motor um, into place on the prop shaft so that it actually doesn't free spin, it spins with the rotation of the prop itself, and this will reduce any vibration um, that's, uh, that uh, the, uh, the brass tube rotating around the prop shaft would, would possibly give. Um, so uh, that's nicely locked into place. So we now have that, and we need to plug in our motor. If we flip this over, I'm going to hold it now because obviously we've got the machine gun there. And if we remember, red is right. So we pop that in like so. And now we should be able to bring 
everything together and have a whole aircraft to admire and then fly. There we go. There we have it. Our fully fledged Newport 17, albeit that uh, this one we need to actually put a, a spinner on the front. But any other that you're building, you are pretty much there, apart from the uh, the pilot. Let's uh, let's do that last. So. This comes with the kit. This is our 2D pilot. Obviously, we also do a 3D pilot, um, which looks absolutely superb in the uh, the Newport and comes in three different styles: goggles on, goggles off, and a, uh, a different um, cap variant as well. Um, but alternatively, you have this rather nice, nicely executed. Two dimensional pilot. It uh, looks quite effective when in when in the cockpit. Um, so this once again is a uh, one of the plastic foldovers, like so. So we just glue, fold over, and install. the glue. I think this will be a fold over, unfold and fold back when the glue is dry sort of part. There we go, glue on both sides. So we'll pop that to one side, clear the decks and um, whilst we're letting the glue dry, we uh, I'll just review what's left to do here for me um, is a little bit of touch up on the on the cowl where I've managed to knock off some of the paint, um, and that's about it. The center of gravity. Now remembering, I haven't got a battery in, but the battery pretty much sits over the center of gravity. Um, so at the moment, it feels like it might be a tad tail heavy, but I think I would be quite happy flying it like this to see whether that was the case, because it is lifting the tail. When I bring it off the bench, it is lifting the tail and moving forward somewhat. So I'd probably like to see it a little more like so. But um, a lot of these aircraft were set up tail heavy anyway, so they could be a lot more manoeuvrable. And with our stabilisation system, I might just get away with it. We'll see. Right. Let's bring our pilot together and get him into the cockpit. This is another use for our little ball is to uh, actually press parts together. Works very well. The the print on these parts is is very solid. It's very difficult to uh, to rub it off. In fact, you have to pretty much rub the material off to uh, to get the the colouring off too. So. Uh, Good. So this little slot at the back here should slot up into the uh, bulkhead at the back of the cockpit. Um, you don't necessarily have to um, slot it all the way up this um, uh, the uh, the slot there. Um, this is a sort of a universal pilot for the 
Um, Uh, for the Allied aircraft, so uh, it tends to vary between aircraft depending on their cockpit layout, etc. So I'll use my tweezers to get in there, down in there. So I pop it down in, not interfering with the uh, cables, the control wires, and then draw the slot up hold on. hold on with something a little bit firmer there we go that's better looking slightly to the right at the moment <laughs> it won't stay it keeps flapping left and right I think the slot may need a little bit of opening up so let's let's do that just like a half mil obviously he's very lightweight and slender so it doesn't keep a doesn't need a great deal of glue to keep him in place Let's give that a go. Okay, Mr. Bourne. Let's try you again. Seems to be a fairly good position in the cockpit. There we go. Have our man front and center. Fantastic. Well, I rather enjoyed that build and a little bit of a different looking Newport than the ones we normally have. Um, as I said, I'll, I'll touch up the uh, the paintwork and um, we'll have a look at the, getting the, um, the nose cone on as well. If you have purchased the, uh, the Albert Ball, aircraft and are constructing it as I am here, you will have in your pack uh, two little discs, one of ply, one of 2 mil foam, and although I've painted this one, um, you'll have a vac formed part here, um, which is what the French called the con de penetration, um, which is basically Albert Ball's spinner. Um, he used a spinner to uh, enhance the aerodynamics of the aircraft um, by popping a, um, a spinner onto the front of his aircraft. Um, I've got one here I made earlier, and so uh, this is uh, this is the uh, the Conde Penetration. As, as you can see, how it assembles is that the uh, um, the plywood disc marries up to the foam disc, like so, um, and then the cone, once it's all, once you've cut it, painted and cut it out, goes onto those two parts there, um, 
and it gets glued. Um, it's good to, if you glue it flat like that so that uh, the, um, the plywood etc is, uh, is completely flat on the base of your, uh, your spinner and in it then that that hole should then fit over the um the little uh, plug the the prop adapter that we use uh, on the uh, on the aircraft so you can actually take it on and off the um uh, the friction fit should be good enough uh, to keep it on there for uh, for flying so um it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite stiff so um, there we go that's uh, that's what we need to do there I won't go through the assembly of this it's uh, it's fairly straightforward um, but uh, I just thought I'd uh, show you um, how that uh, how that actually looks it, in fact like here um, uh, balls spinner actually sat on top of the uh, of the prop itself um, it didn't go down the the sides of the uh, the prop like we see in uh, in in other aircraft that had uh, that had spinners on them so um, i thought i'd just show you that so you know what to do with these parts if you happen to have balls aircraft mm -hmm.